Good evening, folks. Welcome back to another Wednesday night hobby hangout. How the hell is everybody? Plenty of people in the chat tonight, chatting nice and early. So let's say hello to a few familiar faces. Peter Nicholas, always nice and early, mate. You're always one of the first ones in. Nice to see you, fella. Tony Howell was in nice and early as well, saying cooey. <laughs> yeah, I think he also said later on he's uh, he's on he's on um, child mind and duty at the minute, so he may be a bit late. But hello, Tony, if you're around. Uh, Mr. Trina guy as well, nice to see you, mate. He's saying he's painting his dwarf mega his dwarf mega army came. So he's uh, doing some of those at the minute and he's still waiting for his MDF bases and the base and materials, but he's happy. At least you got to be cracking on with me, that's the main thing. Nice to see you in the chat as well. I know you, you missed quite a few. Um and we always end up chatting in the comments the next day. That's that's what I mean by you miss them. Um where else? Uh Peter Kuman in as well. He's got his uh, Asterian ciphers on the go. Um, uh, where we've got uh, Zoltan as well. Nice to see you, Zoltan. Welcome to the chat this evening. Welcome along. We've also got Mark Coley. He's doing a building a strider for his enforcer squad and having a cheeky beer. Well, it is his day off. Enjoy them days off, mate. Few and far between, that's for sure. Blizzards is in as well, saying howdy ho, Black Jackers. Nice to see you, fella. Yorkham's in as well. He says his drink's ready and he'll be hopefully able to work a little on his mini swap project tonight. I must admit, uh, Scott, who I know is in the uh, in the chat further down there, I haven't even started on yours yet, mate. I will get there, I promise. Um, and for those wondering what the mini swap thing is, so in, in if you're a Patreon or you're one of the YouTube members, there you'll see them all with the with the green uh, names in there. You can you can come and get access to the Discord group uh, where we're doing a, a bit of a mini swap thing. So you, you basically we, we drew out at random people's names. You basically paint a miniature to a theme and send it to somebody else in the group. So it's a nice little community thing to be doing. Um, we've also got Busian as well. Nice to see you there. Different Gear TV. Um, <laughs> Peter saying it's a thumbs down from one viewer <laughs> before the broadcast starts. What can I say? I'm popular. <laughs> uh, Scott's in as well. Nice to see you, Scott Longworth. Uh, Christian's in as well. Nice to see you, Christian. We've got uh, Luke's in as well there from Standard Tabletop. Nice to see you. He says, Who else is racing to get a bunch of Dead Zone finished? Me. I will get them finished tonight, though, without a shadow of a doubt. I know I am. I know I will, sorry. Um, John Estel's in as well, finishing off his, his Pathfinders tonight. Nice to see you, mate. Um, Peter there saying he's, uh, he's had a slow start to his Star Saga security, but they're coming along now. That's all it is. I mean, even if you don't make the deadline, mate, it's not the end of the world, is it? I mean, there is a prize, of course, for for um, for one lucky winner. But yeah, just 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 do them because you're enjoying doing them. Scott said he's painting um, Jukari tonight with a cider. It's much easier to use a brush, mate. If you're going to use a cider, it's just going to get messy. <laughs> um, uh, 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 oh, if I can catch it up, where were we up to? Odd Cider Dice Podcast as well. Nice to see you, Kieran. How are you doing, mate? He says, uh, evening all. Thanks for answering the YouTube question today. Anytime, mate, I don't mind. If you've ever got any questions or you're stuck, just give me a shout, mate. Um, Frantic's in as well. Nice to see you, Frantic. Welcome. Well, Paul Inman, nice to see you too, Paul. Josh Price, good evening to you, Josh Price. I was just there. I saw your thing that you put on your on your Facebook page today, or your, your own profile thing, which was the, the question about Mr. Smith had four daughters. <laughs> I've heard it before, and I do know the answer. That was why I didn't comment on it, but yeah, it's a good one. Um, who else have we got in? We've got James Zorms. is way too hot for painting the day, so just hanging out. Just chill, mate. Put your feet up. Uh, David Delaney, nice to see you. Says, doing Andrew's favourite part of the hobby, putting together some untamed beasts. Oh, building models, man. <laughs> uh, Arnold's in as well. Nice to see you, Arnold Agand. How are you doing? Bobby Clark's in, painting a Wood Elf Blood Bowl team. Um, Chris, you're having a chat there, Scott. Says, hey, it's started yours. As long as we're on the same wavelength, Scott, that's all right. <laughs> you're not sitting waiting for yours. Um, Mr. Trainer Guy says, yep, he's done a, a lot of extra night work recently. He haven't painted much. But it's nice to chill, paint, and listen. Welcome aboard, mate. It's nice to have you in there uh, and, and listening and hanging out. We've got Stott, his man cave, says, how's things, mate? Not bad at all, fella. Not bad at all. Hope you're well, too. Fat Cat's in, saying, evening, all work, in work, so no hobby, but we'll be listening in the background. What do you do, Fat Cat? Let, let me know what you do. Uh, nice just to kind of get to know folks, especially when you kind of see the same kind of regular names starting to come into the chat these days as well. It's nice to kind of find a little bit out about each people. Uh, each person, I should say. We've got Tony Booth Leiden in. He's starting on his Eugene. Or Eugene. Or Eugene. You. 
I think it's like Yu Ching, actually how you pronounce it. Infinity models anyway. Nice to see that, mate. Looking forward to seeing them finished. Uh, <laughs> Josh is having a bit of a lot there. VJ's in as well. Good morning, VJ. Super early for you, mate. Thank you very much for coming in. Um, um, where else? Almost finished. Came to finish his hobby swap as well. Going to finish it tonight. We've got Brennick in as well. He's got some Battletech minis to paint. Says <laughs> the missus heads to bed. And VJ says he's actually going to be doing some hobby this morning. Got to get those poxy boys finished. Nice one. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll crack straight on with the painting. Um, uh, Kieran's saying he's with Scott as well. Painting with cider. Don't knock it till you try it. I'm, a, I'm not on cider tonight. I'm, a, I'm on orange juice, which looks, under this light, looks a little bit kind of radioactive. But it is literally just kind of orange juice and water. So, we're cracking back on with the, uh, with the, the vehemen as well. But... To be honest, they're 90% of the way there now, so I'll get these finished tonight. I, I, I've obviously got these these two are the ones that I did a little while ago, so they're they're done and dusted. Happy with them for for basically the standard that I was trying to achieve. Um, this guy's pretty much finished. I've got to just dry brush the base, um, and then that one's pretty much done as well. And then we've got who are these two, four, six, eight of these kind of fellas, and these are these are not far off either. So I think we'll there. Uh, We'll probably crack through and get them done tonight. Um, so, um, Scott says, how many Patreons now? We're at 90 Patreons, mate. We should have, uh, it says 91 if you look, but there was a bit of an issue. So William Jones, unfortunately, you'll see his name there, just below me there, had his, um, his bank account hacked. Um, so what he's done is he's, he's re-signed up with his new bank account details, which means he's actually got he's got two Patreon accounts live at the moment until the other one drops away when, when next month's payment doesn't go through, if you like. Um, so, yeah, so, so it says 91, but we've got 90 at the minute. So we're not far off on Patreons, mate. We're definitely getting there. I'm looking for my dry brush. Where's it gone? There it is. Um, yeah, we're getting, getting close to that magic 100, eh? Um, Tim Kelly's in as well. So evening all. Hope you're all doing grand. I am very well, Mr. Kelly. How the hell's you? What you been up to, mate? Have you been doing a bit more gardening? I know you were you were cracking on with a lot of that stuff. Um, VG is in any day of the week better for you? Blitzball on tabletop simulator. To be honest, mate. Uh, obviously not Mondays. <laughs> obviously not Wednesdays. Um, I am recording the podcast tomorrow night, so I haven't got uh, Thursday's not free this week. I, I, I would say potentially. Um, to be honest, mate, let, let's have a chat offline because actually, let's not say I can't do like a daytime, which will be your, or I can do a morning or something, which will probably be your evening or something like that. So we could potentially do something like that, but we'll we'll look into it, mate, because I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to get a game in, and you can uh, you can you can t talk me through it anyway. Uh, <laughs> Tim's just been chasing the bird around the garden. <laughs> I hope that is just what you were doing, mate, and that's not just some kind of uh, some some slang for chasing some young lady. Um, <laughs> speak. I don't know. I don't know why. Why that kind of popped up in my head there when when I've just read that. However, I've been watching. I kind of binge watched um, The Witcher this week while I've been. Uh, while I've been doing some bits of jobs and stuff at home, like so, I've I've been doing a lot of admin stuff this week. Um, getting the thumbnails set up for for tomorrow's video. Um, getting thumbnails set up for tonight's video. Oh, I forgot I was painting. Yeah, let me, let me just put it on the screen. Um, I, I've been um, I've been sort of trying to sort out the Amazon affiliate stuff, which seems to have not been working properly, and, and actually still might not be working properly as well. To be fair, I'll have to keep looking into that one. Um, so I've been doing that. And in the background, while I've been doing that, I have been uh, watching The Witcher. And I've enjoyed it, if I'm honest. However, um, however, it, the ending was a bit weird. I don't, I don't know if I've completely zoned out and missed something, but it, it just felt like a bit of a poor end to the, to the series. What, what did folks think? Did I, did I miss something critical? Was, was there some specific bit I, that I missed? James said he loved the Witcher series. Um, looking for sort of, I'm looking forward to, to season two, mate. But it didn't exactly like end on a cliffhanger as such. I mean, I hope I'm not spoiling this for anybody. But however, um, it, it was no surprise that uh, 
he managed to kind of meet up. I'm trying to kind of very cautiously kind of do this for those that haven't seen it. It, it was no surprise that he met up with the person that he met up with at the end. <laughs> if you if you like, who have we just got there? We just got uh, pledged by Luke. Um, I don't know if is Luke in the chat. I don't. I don't. It's, it's not. It's not Luke Pryor because Luke's already. Luke's already in the Patreon. But thank you very much, Luke. My eyesight's terrible at the minute. Is, it, is that? Yeah, that is. That, that's, a, that's a ten pound uh, Patreon. Thank you very much, Luke. So that gets you. Uh, gets you lined up for your. Um, for your mug in a few months' time as well. So thank you very much for joining the Patreon. Um, yeah, James is saying. Yeah, I know you. The the end. Yeah, and Scott's saying he's not watched it, which is why I'm trying to like kind of to skip around it. However, so so the ending, James. Um, I, can't, I mean, I, I kind of knew that was coming. It wasn't like that was a cliffhanger. It wasn't like that was a surprise. One thing that kind of threw me a little bit about it is it definitely kind of, it jumps around, doesn't it, in the air. Uh, it jumps around in the timeline a little bit, and it, and it took me a little, it took me a few episodes to realise, ah, he's upgraded. That, that, thank you very much, mate. I really appreciate that. Thank you, uh, thank you, Luke. Hugely appreciate it. In return, please, anybody, standard tabletop. So uh, Luke Pryor there. Great guy, always kind of sort of been in and around the hobby and doing tabletop stuff, but he's just started a YouTube channel. Um, please go and check it out, Standard Tabletop. His first video is up there at the moment. Um, he's, been doing a bit, he's been doing a bit of live streaming as well, which I can tell you isn't as easy as it looks. Um, so yeah, please do go and check it out. Drop him a sub, check out his stuff, um, and just say thank you. Say, say thank you to one of my supporters, um, and please go and support him. So, yes, uh, The Witcher, um, really enjoyed it. Um, I, I didn't realise just how much it was kind of jumping around. But, yeah, I mean, um, Tony saying there, it ends where, where all the setup is basically finished and now the real story starts and no more time jumps, which is great. I, I, I kind of I, I got that. However, like, when a season finishes, there's normally, like, a pretty good cliffhanger, isn't there? There's normally, like, something it's been building up to and you go, like, oh, I wasn't expecting that kind of thing. Oh, let me just put this uh, extra light on here. Um, that, was the, that was the only thing. I, I was expecting a bit more a bit more of a cliffhanger, but I've enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to season two, which, unfortunately now, with coronavirus, is probably going to be well delayed. But, um, yeah, and Vincent's saying there as well, having the season have a real end with no loose threads makes you feel like you missed something which makes it yeah, easier for you to enjoy the show. I think I'm just so used to kind of ending a season on a point where you go, oh, like I can't, like I can't believe that. I, I can't wait to find out exactly what, like what does that mean, kind of thing. Um, because each episode kind of had a little bit, bit of a cliffhanger, if you like. So, but but overall, I, I've never played the Witcher games. I've never read any of the Witcher books, so I don't know anything at all about the Witcher. My whole experience is from uh, watching the TV show. And obviously the fact that everybody tells me how popular the game is. Um, but yeah, re really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Um, oh, wait, let me go back a second. What was, what was Tim chasing the bird around the garden again? I missed that bit. Um, Tim said, uh, it flew into his lad's bedroom window. We thought it was dead. Just stunned and dodgy wink. Or put in a box and give it some food. Oh, Tim, you're all hot, mate. You, you're a nice guy, really. Uh, and now he's all sweaty. <laughs> um, and Vincent's saying... Uh, Netflix is adapting the closed seasons format, I think, as they uh, did it in Altered Carbon, which was awesome. I've been watching Altered Carbon as well, actually. It's, um, I think the only problem with Altered Car Carbon is I feel like I have to be giving it my 100% attention and that I can't just kind of have it on in the background. I kind of, uh, I feel like I have to be really watching and kind of find out what's going on because it's quite, um, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like a thinky type thing. It's not like it's very cerebral, but it's, um, there's a lot of story, if you like, kind of, I feel like I have to watch it rather than, rather than having background stuff. But yeah, I've enjoyed The Witcher. Anybody that hasn't seen that, um, worth a watch on Netflix. I'm sure I'm kind of late to the party anyway, but definitely worth checking it out. Right, what am I going to do next and while we've got that on the go? Um, I think what I'll do is I'll, will I do the base and stuff? No, let's, let's crack on with, um, I'm going to try and pick out. Let's get some of the silver work done now. So, so what I'm using here is the dry paints, which is the Necron compound. Um, we do a little bit more dry brushing. Um, thank you, Christian, for, for the, the link as well to, to Luke's channel. I appreciate that. 
Um, James is saying he's um, <laughs> Luke saying he's not he's not not a great guy. Um, James is saying he's watched the season three times now in the background while painting to pick up all the bits of info and timeline jumps. To be honest, mate, it took me. I don't know. I don't know why. I think it was probably because I had it on in the background and I wasn't wasn't maybe playing as close attention as I um, as I should have been. Hence why I, I thought I'd missed some bits. Um, it took me a while to realise the timeline was jumping around. Um, so. I think that kind of uh, explained a bit, but but I, I liked it. I mean, I, I'm, I feel like I'm doing a down now. It, it it was really good. I enjoyed it, and, I, and I'm and I'm glad I watched it really. But uh, yeah, I just I, I was just when I got to I watched the end of it this morning. That's why it's kind of fresh in my mind. And I watched the end of it while I was getting the live stream stuff set up in here, and uh, there was just that moment of like, oh, <laughs> is that it? Is that the end? Is there something after the t if after the credits? Am I, am I missing something? So, but no, I guess it's, I'm, I'm just not used to things actually wrapping up in a proper storyline. Maybe it was just a point of, um, because I think I read somewhere as well that they'd, they'd commissioned the season two before season one had even been aired. So it wasn't like it was kind of, they weren't trying to maybe hedge their bets on the fact that there might only be one season. So anyway, yeah, good bit of, good bit of TV, nice to watch something a bit different. Um... What was I just... John was saying he's arranging a real-life game tomorrow in a friend's garden. Let's roll some dice. I am jealous, mate. I am so jealous. I kind of tear. I'm missing playing. I'm, I'll be honest. I mean, it's it, it kind of the whole lockdown thing come at a time when I actually started to get some time back. Like, so So regardless of the lockdown, like, I'd have, I'd have been coming out of my job anyway to uh, to be doing this full-time. And, and part of that was actually I was starting to get some time back to uh, to actually play some games because I was I was I was I think that's I've mentioned many many times I was traveling a lot my wife was traveling a lot so I didn't really have a lot of free time to get out and play some games so um I was looking forward to doing that <laughs> and then this happened so that wasn't so good um cuz it's not like I've got like an active social life or anything but I am missing having like I'm missing nipping down the pub to kind of have a couple of beers with my mate kind of once in a blue moon and, I, and I'm missing just wandering around a hobby shop and kind of browsing the shelves and I'm I'm, I'm missing the opportunity to get out and play some games as well now because we used to me, me and Jason used to play games now and then and stuff obviously um, but uh, n not as often as I'd like to um, but yeah it's it's a funny one mate. but yeah getting some getting some garden garden games in not a bad shout not a bad shout at all so I assume you're playing Kings of War, mate, are you? Um, uh, Vincent says, have you started on the expand... Oh, let me go back a little back. A bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. Luke's in, currently watching Murder in the Outback with his wife. It's fascinating. I've just started watching um, Snowpiercer at the minute which with my wife, which I'm really enjoying. There's only been four episodes on, uh, on Netflix at the moment, and I've watched all four episodes of that. Really enjoying Snowpiercer. So for those that... Haven't uh, started watching that yet. That comes highly recommended as well. Um, uh, and even my wife's enjoying it as well, which is, which is nice to have something that the two of us all watch together. Um, James is, oh sorry, Vincent was saying there, have you started The Expanse yet? Somebody recommended it to me a while ago and I started watching it, but I, I didn't quite get into it, mate. I, I think I should go back and try it again. For whatever reason, it didn't really float my boat at the time, but that's, that might be more to do with me, mate. I, I, I saw... On, or, or maybe how much attention I was kind of paying it at the time. So yeah, I'll go back and watch that at some point, I think. Um, James is saying, I'd say, I'd say check out the books. I'm neck deep in Horus Heresy. To be honest, I just, my, my, uh, my wife's got a, like an old Kindle. And um, a long time ago on a, on a humble bundle, I got, um, I got loads and loads of the Horus Heresy books. Um, so I've just, I've, I've gone back. I've kind of downloaded them all now and put them onto her Kindle. And I'm starting to kind of, to have something different to do, really, because uh, almost just something to chill and relax to. Um, so I'm going to try sitting, kind of reading for a bit. I don't read a lot of books. I, I listen to a lot of audio books, but I don't read very much. So I'm uh, that's my plan, really, is to sit in there, start on some of the Horus Heresy stuff, because I've already got it, really. It's not like I've got to buy anything. Um, so, yeah. And I've read, I've read the first one a couple of times, actually. 
but I have gone back to the start of the series and um, start again really so it's all fresh in my mind so yeah I've, I've started on that one um, William Jones, nice to see you, mate. How are you doing? He says, the Witcher books are awesome. If you like high fantasy with a touch of dark, the Witcher's great, similar to the best of the Black Library, uh, with sharper humour and more introspective dark. Nice. And he said, if I remember, Tony said, if I remember right, the first series covers about 60 to 80 years. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to tell because obviously some of them don't age because either, either they're, they're witches or they're, like, they're witches or witchers. Um so it's quite hard to tell actually sometimes when, when, whether they've aged or not, uh, like time-wise. Um, but no, I've, I've found it really interesting, man. I've found it really interesting. Um, so I do, I do look forward to, to another season of it. And the fact that I've kind of binged through it in, in like less than a week, I must have been enjoying it. It's not, normally if I, get, if I get bored, I just turn something off really. So yeah, I must have enjoyed it if I've, if I've kind of blasted through it in a week or so. Um, do you know what, folks? I'm going to finish these really quick tonight, and I haven't really set anything else up to paint. So I'm going to have to dig something out, I think, otherwise it's going to, it's going to be a bit boring, isn't it? Just watching, well, it's not going to be boring sitting, sitting watching me talk to you. That's what I'm doing on a Monday. It's just not what you're tuned in for. But we'll crack on through. I'm sure we'll we'll crack on. But yeah, I mean, these these Wednesday nights, I mean, we, we had a pretty good laugh last Wednesday. We were chatting about all sorts of TV shows and things like that. And, and I'm thinking that's kind of... It's it's where I really want these to be. I think like like Mondays are the really kind of gaming like topics, um, you know, specific topics that we talk about gaming and stuff. And obviously, we'll talk about gaming tonight. We always do, but um, it's like I think these Wednesdays where we're just sitting painting and hanging out and stuff, it's almost just an opportunity to talk about anything. I like, tell me what books you're reading. Tell me what films you're watching. Tell me what music you're listening to. If you've if you found a new band that you haven't heard of before and you're kind of enjoying the music. Anything like that, like that, just, you know, we're all into similar things. We all like this kind of similar geek culture type stuff. So let's not just limit it to gaming, uh, uh, gaming alone, really. Let's, uh, let's open it up a little bit. Um, let's, oh, let's do that pipe work. Should we do that pipe work? What did I do on the other one? I didn't yet. Let's do it silver. Um, Tim says, new series of What We Do in the Shadows starts tomorrow on BBC Two. I'll have to check that out. I, mean, I still haven't watched the first one yet, to be fair, but um, is this, I, I assume that's the English version. There's an American, uh, is, there's an American ver or an Australian version, isn't there? Is the original one, I think. And I think I've seen a few episodes of that one. Or it's a film. I've seen some of the film, I think. That's what I'm trying to remember. That's what I'm remembering now. Um, let me just do... All I'm doing here, folks, is that there's, there's like loads of bits of kind of spikes and things, and I'm just going through really quickly and just picking out bits of metals and things just to give it a little bit of something. Um, I'm not particularly taking my time on these. These are just the grunts. They'll, they'll probably be on the board for five minutes. It'll have taken me, certainly take me longer to paint them than, than they'll last in the game. So unless I, unless I all of a sudden discover how to play, <laughs> play well rather. Which would be a surprise in itself. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look. Where else are we at? Peter Kuhn says, which it was good. I think the first season would be something like a prologue. Yeah, and that's, I guess, I guess really like kind of like looking back, that's what it was. But it's quite a risk, like with a new series, to, to, kind of, uh, to kind of do that. But I guess they know their audience, really, don't they? It's not like it's, um, they're not surprising themselves by, uh, Appealing to a certain crowd with The Witcher. So let's do that bit as well. Um, Tony says there's some really good metal versions of the song Toss a Coin to Your Witcher. Do you know what it is, mate? I, I, I remember at the time hearing about it everywhere, but because I hadn't seen the TV show yet, I didn't really want to kind of like listen to them in case it spoiled anything for me. Um, but I must admit, when I, I I think it's like episode two that that song's in. It is pretty catchy, to be fair. Like I I now know why it seemed to be everywhere at the time. Um, Christian saying there, sixty to eighty years is Geralt's life. The mage is one hundred and twenty, and the humans twenty. I think. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, it's. It's it's obviously talked about in the in the TV show, but it's it's not like it's not easy. It's not easy to follow up out, but but. It doesn't. It doesn't like ruin the, the film or anything. It doesn't ruin the TV series. Put it that way. Um, 
Jim said he's looking forward to checking out Snowpiercer. Yeah, it, to be honest, mate, I, I I knew there was a film from like early two thousands, uh, which has got Chris Evans in the the Captain America, Chris Evans, and um, I knew it was a thing, but I'd never seen that either, um, and I knew it was based upon a, a graphic novel. But um, yeah, I'm re really really enjoying it, and there is a song that sang in the second episode by somebody hall i forget which is called now um called see it in sojo which is like a song from like 1975 or something like that what a voice that woman has she is unbelievable singer uh, the actress that is playing the part in in the tv series actually is the, is the girl singing as well she's got a hell of a voice um but yeah i'm kind of i'm enjoying that stuff um Right, I think what we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll get a bit of wash into the around the eyes and the noses and stuff like that. Let me get my black paint. Um, where are we up to? John saying, first time out with Trident Realms for Kings of War. A bit of rain would surely help me. <laughs> You're getting, getting the frogs on the table, mate. I'd say, I, to be honest, mate, I, um, Jason, my, my mate, is... I also like um, my brother-in-law as well as family, and uh, we've been kind of chatting as well about about maybe trying to get like an outside game on the go now. So yeah, that might be uh, be quite nice to do. Just read. Really, I I don't like. I think it's different when I when I can't play games because like I'm working or whatever it is, and I, and I'm not getting the time. I kind of like I accept the fact that I can't play, but now now I've got the now I've got the time to play, and you know I've like my dwarfs are. Kind of like pretty much finished now for um for Kings of War. They're not far off finished. I think I've got like maybe another unit or so to do. Um, I've got my um my Dead Zone stuff, which is essentially will be finished tonight as well. Um, I've got still got my Warcry stuff that I've I'm, I'm kind of enjoy playing as well. So I've got like loads of stuff that's ready to go. But unfortunately, like, ain't not getting no games. <laughs> Uh, Paul says you can't really watch the expanse in the background. It does require your attention. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I, I, what I tend to do is it, it's very rare that I sit and just sort of watch something on my own. Um, if I if I'm watching if I'm sitting down to watch it, I tend to watch something with my wife and we'll watch something together. If I'm watching something on my own, it tends to be like background stuff while I'm doing like a million other things. And, and like you see, I, I don't think that's necessarily the uh, the right thing for that particular show. And that's probably why I why I didn't it didn't click with me the first time. Um, right, and what was I just going to do there? I was going to pick up some of this cotty, just to paint in with the the back of the uh, some of the straps and stuff around here. And get it round. I like some of those a little bit. I think I'll just run a bit of a, a bit of a dark wash like a it's called Agrox wash or something just to take the starkness out of those ones once it's sorted. Um, what else have I got? That was the one. I knew there was one way I'd missed the strap across the back of his neck there. Um, um, Duffy Wachowski's in. Nice to see you, mate. All the way from a balmy Levittown. Um, He's watching a guy paint a space wrap, man. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thank you so much for coming in, Duffy. Always nice to see you, mate. Always nice to see you. I hope you're keeping well. I hope uh, hope things are well in your part of the world. You can't be too sure how things are for anybody at the minute, can you? Everything that's going on. Um, Phil Wilkinson's in as well. Nice to see you, sir. How are you doing, Mr. Wilkinson? Nice to see you too. Um, start his man cave. <laughs> Duffy, sorry, Duffy's just sorry. Tony saying to Duffy that isn't what everyone does on a Wednesday night. It seems to be recently made. I'm, I'm going like in the future. I'm going to try and like mix up the stuff I paint. But I, this is this has almost been the only opportunities I've been to do, to paint my models for the Dead Zone challenge that I've set everybody else. So I, I, <laughs> this is you you. I, I I don't think I've really painted anything off stream. So essentially, you've seen me pretty much paint these from start to finish. Um, I think so. Yeah. 
Right, that's that. I'm just touching up some of the belts and things now, things where maybe the, because I use contrast paints on, on the trousers and there's the odd bit where it's maybe a little bit more highlighted than I wanted it to be around the belt areas. But yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to find something else to get the brushes on tonight. Because I think I'm going to have these done pretty soon. I didn't, I didn't think I was that far on until I kind of picked them up. Um, and and, and the, the worry is if I sit on a, on a painting stream like this, and I haven't really got, like if I've finished them, rather than just saying, right, they're done, move on, I end up kind of going, well, I'll just mess on with this bit, and I'll, and I'll just do this bit, and I'll, I'll add a little bit here. Before you know it, you've, you've ruined them, gone too far. Um, but it's just, I think they're okay. All right, I think what we'll do now is we will, I think I'll come around now with the black paint and we'll, we'll, just, we'll just paint around the, around the rims of the bases a little bit. Um, right. Stotty's Man Caves is all your books are okay, but character voices can be off-putting and some narrator's voices send me to sleep. Yeah, I, I, I got into audio books for a couple of reasons I think I've mentioned before. Obviously, I used to do a lot of driving with my job, like traveling around, um, traveling abroad and stuff as well. So I used to listen to audio books when I was on the go, really, um, rather than actually reading. Uh, and also, I think I've mentioned, I, I always go to sleep with my headphones in, like listening to something to kind of switch my brain off, really, because I seem to kind of lie awake th thinking about 10 million things that I need to do the next day. Um, so listening to an audio book or a podcast always kind of uh, gets me to focus on something, I think, and just I end up drifting off to sleep that way. So, yeah, so I've, I've kind of gone to audio books over the years, like just audible subscription. Um, it just kind of works out good value, really. Uh, but, yeah, I'm trying, obviously now just, just trying, to, trying to do something different because it, it's funny because at the minute, like, like my wife keeps saying to me, so like, like have some time off. Like don't, like don't, don't overdo it if you like. Like when it comes to, because at the minute it's it's still, not not that I'm not enjoying it or anything it's like silly like that, but I, like trying trying to find at what point do I actually like stop working and, and do something else. The problem is as soon as I stop like doing stuff for the channel, I want to sit and hobby, and, and then when when I sit and hobby, I'm thinking actually I should be recording this or or I should be uh, I should be doing that or I, I should be, I should like I should be. Uh, you know, like like anything that is my hobby, really, I end up wanting to put on camera. So um, it's hard to know when to switch off at the minute. So I'm just I'm just trying to think of like some other stuff to do, really, just to to have a little bit of a break. So yeah, I'm thinking just have like even if it's just half an hour a day, just sit and read a bit a bit of a book, just to try and wind down a little bit, do something a little bit different. Um. Tim said, need to watch The Expanse, watch the first two episodes when it came out, started playing Elite Dangerous again. Fancy some good Space Colony related TV. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I've ever really kind of watched anything like that before. Like, like Star Trek's not really my kind of bag, to be fair. Um, not that I've ever seen like, the TV series, but I've, I've not watched the new Star Trek stuff. Was it on Amazon or Netflix, whichever channel it was on? Um, that kind of like, almost like space politics, if you like, type things. Uh, it's never really kind of floated my bag that much really but uh yeah i, I mean obviously I, I'll, de I'll definitely be checking it out at some point um peter saying when you finish painting early just dance for the rest of the time <laughs> that, that won't last very long mate believe me i'm not fit enough to dance for very long um john says if you've got nothing to paint we could watch you build something we know how much you like that do you know what, John? I don't think I have anything to build, believe it or not. I don't have any model kits at all that need building. How how weird is that? I think the last things I needed to build was my Kings of War stuff, and that's all built. Um, it's not the, the, the stuff I've got left to do for Kings of War, unfortunately, isn't primed, though. Otherwise, I would have just cracked on with some of that. But um, have I got anything up there? Yeah. Uh, I've potentially got some. I'm, I might have some bits. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, Luke says, that's what I like about the chat on these nights. We're all just doing hobby while we're listening so we can talk and sort of chat like we're in the pub or around the table having a chin while. Yeah, that's kind of the point, mate, really. I mean, like I say, like the, the Monday night ones, I found that they, they kind of they work best when I've got a really kind of specific topic and I have something to, 
to focus on and, and it brings people in. Like for example, the one I did on Monday night has been like one of my most successful like Monday night live streams. Um, like the, I had like nearly a thousand views um, on that on that live stream. Like by the time I went to bed, like on the, on Monday night, and, and it's been picking up views ever since as well. So even like as a, as a normal video, like it's it's done it's done decent enough. Um, but it's hot topic at the minute. It's it's GW stuff. Um, there's a new edition coming. Um, you mix in with a slightly kind of provocative title about potentially the the death of Kill Team, and uh, you kind of strike gold a little bit. I'm I'm not like you know I'm not getting like fifty thousand views on stuff, but my measure is always like, if I if I can get roughly ten percent of my subscriber base, that amount of people to watch to watch one of my videos. I'm quite happy with that basically and then as my subscriber base grows over time so will my views grow as well so I always kind of target to get about 800 views on a video um, anything more than that is kind of like I class it as as relatively successful so that's normally where I kind of pitch my stuff um, and that way I just don't get I don't have any really high expectations if I get something that doesn't get that same that number of views it just makes me kind of assess it and think like well what was it was it the topic or was it like um, uh, you know what was it so for example these Wednesday night ones they never get anywhere near that probably get about 400 500 views on some of this over over a period of a couple of weeks um, but these ones are these are like I've said before these are community ones these are like these are for the people that kind of uh, the, the hardcore regulars, if you like, or or people just wanting to hang out and have something in the background while they're painting. Um, they they don't drive subscribers, they don't drive views, but I I enjoy doing them. I'm I'm gonna sit and paint anyway, so yeah, I kind of just I enjoy them. They're they're for me and they're for you really. It doesn't like they're never gonna get searched kind of things. I'm not I'm not gonna get a big influx of views on something like this, but it doesn't mean I shouldn't do them. Um. Um, uh, Vincent saying, I wonder why nobody typed, <laughs> but the chat had crashed. <laughs> so I, said, I tend to listen to Nordic Viking music, it's very hypnotic. Wow, mate. Inspired taste, eh? Vincent says, he returned to listen to the Lamb of God. Currently watching the Shan Shannara Chronicles, but not sure what to think of it yet. I don't even think I know that, mate. Brennick says, Expanse is brilliant, but still haven't got the season four yet. Watching the Last Kingdom season four at the moment. Uh, feeding my dog age saga fascination. Ah, nice one. Tim saying TV shows in America, films in New Zealand. It's the same world. Mark Berry's is cracking it. I, I wasn't sure if I knew that. I knew the film was kind of like well, New Zealand, Australia, and it was like from um, f down under, if you like. Um, but I, I wasn't sure whether the, I wasn't sure whether there was an American version and a British version. But uh, yeah, I, I like Mark Berry. He's good, mine, to be fair. Um, Kieran saying, music to game. What sort of album would you say is one that's linked to gaming? To me, Bull Throw, because their albums had Pete Knife and artwork. Do you know what? I, I, used, to, I, I used to quite often listen to um, the D6 Generation podcast. Was it that? Actually, I wonder if it was that. There was, there was something I used to listen to. And they used to give kind of music to kind of game two and I always remember that there was one that was based upon like Malifaux and they kind of came up with some music to kind of to, to put on his background music for, for the, like for Malifaux and I, I, I basically kind of put all of those different songs onto my onto my phone because they were all great I think one was kind of I think the song's called uh, In the House In a Heartbeat which is basically um, it's one of the one of the kind of the musical um, scores from um, from Twenty Eight Days Later, and it was a, it was an amazing kind of sort of quite quite hypnotic, um, slightly kind of weird. What's the song called again? I forget now, but it was just an instrumental song. It'll be on my phone actually. I won't play it obviously for copyright strike reasons, but. Um, yeah, I, I, it, it was. There was a few things where it was just, you know, like s songs that kind of inspire a feeling in gaming. I think things like you know Game of Thrones, um, like sort of soundtracks, um, that kind of anything. That, what's, what, what's the other one I'm trying to think of? There's another kind of like epic score or oh, things like, like things like Pirates of the Caribbean type soundtracks and things like that. They're just, they're just like. 
like big orchestral kind of atmospheric music for, for in, the, in the background when you're gaming and things. But uh, I don't tend to play music when I'm gaming, unfortunately. Probably should start, actually. Quite nice to have some kind of background stuff. It's, not, it's normally the background noise of kids running about in the house. <laughs> That's normally what I, I game to. But, uh, yeah. So does anybody, does you, do you folks, do you listen to music when you're gaming? Is that, is that or do you just kind of, do you, do you tend to be trying to concentrate on what you're doing? So that tends to take a bit of a backseat. Um... Tony said he's in now. Nice to see you, mate. Brennan says Peyton Battletech Minis tonight as he's been playing the PC game, which is a total time sink and barely get past the menu screen as the soundtrack is so good. I'll have to check the soundtrack out, mate. I've not, uh, I don't think I've actually listened to the soundtrack. Um, Peter says, Can I enter more than one strike team in the challenge? Only six to go for 150 points on his Asterians. Yeah, why the hell not, mate? I'm not, I'm not fussed. You feel free to enter more if you've, if you've done it. Um, it's meant to be for a bit of fun in it at the end of the day. So yeah, get get them in, mate. Get them in. Uh Tim says, what happened to us? That happened to us with Westworld, not paying full attention. One episode came on and we were clueless. Thought we'd missed an episode. <laughs> I, to be honest, mate, I think we did the same thing with Westworld. I don't think I was paying kind of full attention when we were watching it. And there was that like kind of like that moment of like, oh, I'm not sure. I think I think we watched maybe two or three episodes, but yeah, I definitely felt like I'd missed out on something at some point. There's a few things like that. Like, like I still haven't watched all of Game of Thrones because I, I wasn't watching it at the time. I didn't enjoy the first episode when it first aired. Um, and then actually I went back like later and started watching it again. Um, and, and then I think I left it too long, by which point there was like seasons and seasons of the stuff. So I started to go back and start to watch it. But I think when I'm kind of binging on something like that, I think I get a bit tired of it. I think I kind of like binge out on it, and I, which is why it's nice to get into something like Snowpiercer or something and just watch it from the start, or The Witcher. Watch that one season, have a bit of a break, and kind of come back to it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to kind of to do that, I think. Right, we're going to um, get a little bit of white, I think, and just put a tiny bit of white over the dry brush on the basin. Uh, where are we up to? Jonathan Wyborn, nice to see you in for that. He says, evening everyone, finishing some more hate minis. Nice one. Uh, Luke's saying, thanks for those that subscribed. Thanks for the shout out. Not a problem at all, mate. Thank you very much for your support. Um, Duffy says, first, first day of vacation for what it's worth. Nice one. Enjoy it. Scott's saying, Red Dwarf. I've kind of, I watched Red Dwarf many, many years ago. I've not seen the kind of the, the later one or, or the latest one, should I say. Um, but I remember watching it like kind of college time, I think, for me. The smoke me a kip of days. <laughs> um, Paul says, I guess you didn't watch the remake of Battlestar Galactica then. No, I, I, I don't think I ever saw the original, mate. My, never, mind the, never mind the remake. Uh, I, didn't, I, I didn't tend to watch a lot of TV, if I'm honest. So I, I, do, I do like films. I probably watch more films than I do uh, TV. Um, so a lot of stuff kind of passed me by over the years, really. Um, things like Battlestar Galactica, Doctor Who, like a lot of that kind of stuff. Just it's never really been on my radar. I'd I'd always rather be doing something else, I'd, um, rather than sitting watching kind of TV, really. And and obviously when you had to um, wait a week for the next episode, if you like, I just. Uh, I'd, I was probably more likely kind of out for a few beers or, or playing football or out for a run. Or, so for years, I never really kind of, never really watched a lot of TV. Um, Craig says Mandalorian. Uh, again, mate, I think I've watched the first three episodes of Mandalorian. We had a, um, like kind of um, a seven or a 14 day tr trial of Disney Plus. Um, I think only the first three or four episodes were on there at the time, so I kind of watched them um, and enjoyed them, but uh, but then never signed up for, for Disney Plus. So I've not watched the, all of the Mandalorian yet either. That's probably the kind of thing I'd put on in the background. Um, so I might I might sign up for for another free trial uh, with my account and do that. Um, 
for instance, the Expanse and Star Trek are so far apart, they might be different genres. The Galactic remake was beautiful. I need to watch it. I think, I think in my head, mate, they just, they just sound like, like I say, I've not, I've not seen either. <laughs> so it's, not, it's not even like, uh, it's not even like I can compare them really. But they, they feel, they feel like they could be kind of similar. I think in my head, that's probably why I'm confusing the two. Craig saying Battlestar Galactic was awesome. Uh, Peter says nothing to build. I can build for days and still have stuff left. Do you know what it is, mate? For all I don't enjoy building, I tend, like, when I tend not to buy something and then not build it. I, I tend, like, I've got very, like, well, I haven't got any now, but but it's very rare that I'll buy something and then it'll sit in a box, basically, like, unused. What I'll tend to do is I'll tend to build it pretty quickly and then it'll sit on in a box, like, unpainted or, or unused, if you like. But, yeah, I've got, I'm, I'm like, like 99% sure I've got nothing left to build at the minute. I was actually looking online today, potentially kind of to pick something up for myself as a nice little project, but um, who knows? Um, oh, I think the chat must have moved there while I looked, while I turned away. Um, let me scroll back a bit. Oh, it def oh, definitely jumped a bit more than I thought it had. Uh, Busey saying, could do with some Zenithal Primer on the Kings of War stuff, maybe. The problem is, mate, my, my airbrush stuff is over here, and it, I'll, I've got like a, a like an airbrush hood, and by the time I put the put the hood on to pull any kind of like fumes and stuff away and overspray away, you'll not be able to hear me even chatting. Uh, um, Stephen Bonner, nice to see you in, mate. How are you doing? He says he's building his two hundred more guard standing minis. Marco's in as well. He says painting, walking dead vehicles, and trying out pigments. I am. Um, I tell you what. He's saying, how do I use it? The pigment binder. I think a bit, eventually what you what you do, mate, is, is you essentially put the pigments on to the model, like as a like a dust, and then you basically just kind of like just drop it on like with a pipette or something like that. And I think it almost just like soaks it and seals it. Those that haven't seen it, there's a, there's a lad called Dave who quite often comes into our chat. He's in our Facebook group. He's got a, a channel called MS Paints. And he did a video recently, the last few days, which was about doing, a, um, I think it's an ATST for Star Wars Legion. And he's used a lot of um, like weathering techniques on it and stuff. It looked awesome. I mean, he's a, he's a, he's a phenomenal painter. Um, just like the, the, the guy's got, has got MS, like multiple sclerosis, which is, which is why it's called MS Paints. So he kind of, he's found ways over the years to find things like tips and tricks to, to get over um, his problems that he has kind of keeping things steady or, or can't really do fiddly things. Um, so he's just found really good ways to make things easy. And uh, it's phenomenal to watch him paint. And some of his stuff is out of this world. If you go back and check one of his videos, he did some 3D printed um, like dinosaur stuff for a Seraphon army. And he painted those up in like next to no time. And he, like loads of little tricks that he does, but they just look phenomenal. I definitely recommend going and checking it out. Um, um, Stockies Man Caves says this is a local chat for local people. We have none of them riffraff viewers in here. <laughs> it's kind of what it's like, isn't it? It's definitely kind of. I mean, we've got a, we've got like a core of people that come in for the for the um, for the the Wednesday night hobby hangouts. Like I say, these are not the kind of things that like drag in like new people necessarily. Hopefully, once they do come in, they, they like to hang out and stay. But what we got, we got like about fifty in the chat or something like that. Like fifty is amazing for just kind of hanging out and just. And watching this kind of stuff, we've got less we've got less likes than we have people. Though I'd like some more likes for because that would be nice. Like, yeah, yeah, I think there's 52 people in the chat. That's awesome. Hello, 52 people. By the way, if you if you're new here, please shout up. Please say hello. It's nice to see who we've got. Um, it's nice to see where you found out about the channel. If you are new here, what brought you over? Just helps me to know, like, kind of what what stuff people are looking for. Um, Peter's asking, is Stephen, what's he asking? What's he using for his guard stand-ins? Um, Paul's having a chat there about the expanse with Vincent. Robert says, oh, good evening, Robert, by the way. He says, well, I'm here. just finished a game of Blitzkrieg Commander, and I've got some terrain and 15 mil tanks to build. Robert, I think you I think you not only kind of like paint and build more games than I can imagine, I, I see you playing them as well. It's not like they never get used. I'm kind of, I'm quite quite impressed, mate, with your, with your ability to get through that stuff. Um... Uh, Paul saying in the house in a heartbeat is an absolutely stunning piece of music. Yeah, it, it's. I think I I've, obviously I've seen the film like many times, and I, and I don't think I've really. You don't, you don't necessarily listen to the music in isolation when you're watching a film. It's part of the kind of building the tension and building the moment. 
but to listen to it as a piece of music just on its um, on its own. I have to. I'll, have to, I'll tell you, I'm going to try and find that piece of music now. So the other piece that I want you to kind of, I would recommend that you listen to as well. If I can find it in my in my, actually, if I can put it on here and see if I can find it in my uh, in my music section. It shows you how often I listen to to music on here. I don't even know where my music section is. Um, have I passed it? Let me just. There it is, music. I'll see if I can find the uh, if I can find the song. Um, these oh, so these were some of the songs that that he kind of recommended. So one was um, Padres Wood, which is from John Carpenter's Vampires. That was one of the songs that it recommended for kind of Malifaux background music. There was a song called um, Oriental Uno by Symbiosis Gathering, um, which was again really kind of almost like steampunk. Um, it's I'll put links to them in 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 the chat later on or something like that. Uh, in the house in a heartbeat, lock by I am Clute. That was that was the one I, I would kind of recommend as well. That's a that's a hell of a uh, song. By the way, the, the Michael Bublé one was a free a free gift by by Apple Music. I did not purchase that. Um, so yeah, I've got some interesting stuff on here. This is not kind of like this is stuff of like some of my musical tastes, like Levelers, um, Velvet Revolver, uh, Kasabian, Plan B, Jimi Hendrix. Again, I think that Cheryl Cole one was a free one from Apple as well. Uh, Jimi Hendrix, we got as mentioned. Um, Kanye West, The XX, Black Keys. I, I love Frank Sinatra and the Rack Pack. Uh, David Getter, Daft Punk. Uh, more XX there. Yeah, that, that's kind of, some some of that's kind of weird stuff. My my kind of strange musical tastes. I've got I've got kind of wide and varied musical tastes. Um, where are we up to on the chat? Then let's have a look. Um, Scott's in likes playing games and listening to the mixed metal music, especially Five Finger Death Punch. I've heard of them, mate, but I've not I've not um, listened to their music. My my older boys are quite into kind of quite heavier stuff, things like Avenged Sevenfold and um, oh, what's the Sabaton? I think my one of, one of my boys is like uh, certainly was massively into Sabaton, been to see them a few times. They had tickets to go to Download Festival this year as well, obviously before it was cancelled. So um, yeah, they're they're more they're more metal than their dad is, that's for sure. Uh, my my era was kind of sort of nineties rock, really, it was Guns and Roses and and that kind of stuff, really. Um, that was that was more my stuff. I never really did get into the the, the really kind of heavy like thrash metal or death metal type stuff and things. Um, but yeah, I've got, I've got all sorts of musical tastes, really. Like, like I say, I, I love kind of a bit of Frank Sinatra, kind of a bit of Rap Pack, a bit of Crooners. Um, really, I, I listen to a lot, a lot of kind of like rap as well, quite like rap music. Um, so yeah, I've got just mixed mixed tastes, shall we say. Um, Mark Ross says, love that soundtrack. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't it? Vincent saying that was the title theme for 28 Days Later. Rewatched it. It was so funny. They were so noisy. I couldn't even feel bad that the zombies got up to them. <laughs> um, Peter Cummins says Man of War is great music to game with. I've not even heard of Man of War. Um, other, than, other than the game, Man of War. Um, Vincent says when he's playing Kings of War, I love to play the Warcraft 2 soundtrack. Yeah, that's that's a good shout as well, mate. I wonder if that was one of the ones I was trying to think of. There's a film I'm thinking of that has a fantastic soundtrack. Um, yeah, just to, it's. Oh, is it? Oh, no, it's not Gladiator. Oh, it'll, it'll come to me later on. Maybe Lord of the Rings or something. It'll, it'll come to me later on anyway. Um, Luke's saying, I'm very hard of hearing, so background music and noise really causes me to struggle to focus on what I'm doing. I can. Do you know what? I, it's funny you say that, mate. I, I had a conversation with my missus this week, so obviously me and my wife and the little one all being kind of in the house together, or like not going out anywhere and stuff. It, it becomes quite, quite noisy. So I'm trying to have a conversation like, or I'm trying to watch something on my phone or something while my little one's trying to watch something on TV while my wife's talking to me, trying to have a conversation. And I just, I, like, there's so much noise going on all at once. I think my brain just switches off. And, and like, I not only don't really understand what I'm watching, but I, I, I don't even hear the conversation that my wife's trying to have with me either. Um, which makes me sound really bad-mannered because Mike's going, Andy, Andy, 
are you listening? And I'd say, no, actually I'm not. <laughs> uh, but not intentionally, just like I think my brain just switches off. Um, David Delaney says he's been listening to the Doom soundtrack while he plays Kill Team. Nice one, mate. Uh, 28 Days Later used a lot by a group called Godspeed, you Black Emperor. Very thematic and builds up to a crescendo. Interesting, mate. I've not, not heard of those either. Robert says sometimes listen to epic music on YouTube while I'm painting. Um, Gladiator soundtrack's great. Maybe that is the one I'm thinking of, him, mate. Steve Bonner says he's using Void 1.1 Viridian in <laughs> Interdict Marine Plastics from Scotia Grendel. There's a lot of words I never thought I'd say tonight. <laughs> uh, Kieran says, anyone remember when Flexi Disc from Sabbath came on the front of White Dwarf? I remember somebody telling me about that, but yeah, it was before my time, mate. Um, Paul saying, if you like sci-fi, I remember both Expanse and Battlestar Galactica. Uh, oh, I would have done until I jumped off the top of my screen. Let me go back. Uh, yeah, the lad now 15 years old or still stands up to scrutiny. I don't mind the age, to be fair, mate, because sci-fi, sci-fi kind of thing. I'm all right with that. I mean, Star Wars is still one of my favourite bits of sci-fi, the original movie, and yeah, that's that's old. So Scott says, I think background music changes depending on the game played. If I'm playing World War II or Team Yankee, I put a loop of battleground soundtracks. That's pretty cool. But a bit of background sound actually is not a bad shout. Um, Peter Cummins said, anyone watch Bright on Netflix? Found it pretty neat. I quite enjoyed it, mate. It, it got a bit of a, a slating, to be fair, when it was uh, when it first came out. But I actually quite enjoyed it. Um, right, what do I do? What do I do with these kind of panels on here? They, they, they seem too boring and flat. I need to do something with them, I think. I mean, the obvious things to paint, paint hazard stripes or something on them, but I don't think I really want to do that. While I'm thinking about it, let's let's highlight the blue stuff anyway. Um, uh, where are we up to? Scott's saying, looking at expanded Drew Corey or potentially looking for a new star collecting box. Yeah, I quite fancy a star collecting box, man. I, I can't decide what I want. Anna's in as well from Red Rose Wargaming. Good evening, Anna. She's so just painting some abandoned mine terrain today. Do you paint all of the terrain for your channel stuff, Anna? Again, folks, while I remember on as well, if, uh, if, if you're into Warcry, maybe a little bit of... Um, Burrows and Badges as well, please check out Red Rose Wargaming, another amazing channel. I'm hugely fortunate to have um, people who support me and what I'm doing, who also have amazing kind of channels and um, podcasts and uh, blogs and all that kind of stuff of, of their own as well. So yeah, pl please do kind of um, share the love and, and check some of the other folks out as well if you if you see their stuff. Um, do, yeah, do you do you do most of the painting of the uh, the terrain stuff, do you, Anna? Because I know you did the you did the Playmobil Arena thing, didn't you? Um, Steve said he's just working away as normal. Glad to be building minis again. Um, we've got Shalabir uninstall. I hope I didn't butcher that name. I apologise if I did. He says, I am new. First from the channel due to your Necromunda vs. Kill Team paint. Thank you very much. Nice to have you here. Uh, Interzone says, hi, I enjoyed the Monday night topic. Thank you very much, Interzone. Um, yeah, like I say, mon Mondays tend to be much more focused. We try and kind of have a topic. It's good to get people's thoughts because obviously I, my, my opinion is just my opinion. It's not like I've got the kind of, not, I've got the, I haven't got the facts for everything. I, I don't have the, the kind of the, the monopoly on truth, if you like. So it's always good to get everybody else's uh, opinions and stuff on those um, streams. Um, but yeah, it's cool. 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 Thank you very much for coming in. Um, Mortis says, just apply the binder to some sections. Need to move his office desk for 40 minutes to do some work. Catch you later. Okay, mate. Tony Tiger's in as well. He's painting eyes on his marauders. Very Marty Feldman looking. <laughs> what you need to do, mate. Toothpicks. Toothpicks for eyes. That's what you need to use. Um... Christian saying, damn, now I need to watch Vampires again. I like John Carpenter's, John Carpenter's Vampires. Tim Kelly says, I include Awesome Band. They're amazing, mate. I went to, uh, I've been to see them. They, they were a support band. So up here in the Northeast, we have what's called the Mouth of the Time Festival, which is, um, it's basically an outdoor festival. Um, and it's like at an at old time mouth priory, like outside. And um, I think the night we went to see, I include with support. And the, the main act, I think, was oh what's his name the guy from from beautiful south um jackie somebody that was the was the is the female singer and i forget the guy's name peter no it'll come to me in a bit anyway 
the, the, the man and woman from Beautiful South, they, they were kind of like the main acting at the time. They were, they were amazing, but I, I think the majority of people didn't have a clue who I Am Clute were, but I knew quite a few of their songs, and I really, I really enjoyed seeing them, actually. <laughs> Mark was saying, nothing wrong with Michael Bublé. I'm not a big fan of Michael Bublé, mate. Uh, Robert Zung says, I jump around quite a bit. I get the urge to play this and that, but I haven't bought any new games or new stuff. Nice one. Scott says he's just signed up to Spotify. I, have, I, I keep thinking I would sign up to Spotify, but then I, I find that the free version's pretty much good enough, I think, for how much I listen to it. Um, the only difference being I've got um, like Sonos speakers at home, and you can only use the Sonos speakers with Spotify if you have a paid-for account. So I, and I also I'm, I'm a, like an a Amazon Prime member, and you get Amazon Music for free as well, so I, I, I use that most often. Um, please, as I say, for steampunk stuff, the band... Abney Park is quite good. I'll have to check them out, mate. Steve Bonner says he listens to Sabaton for Bolt Action. Um, York, I'm listening to a lot of Kilo and Lark and Poe. Um, never heard of either of them, mate. It's good to hear some different ones. Um, Luke saying he's a big fan of Frank Sinatra. Johnny Cash, yeah. Dave Pack, uh, uh, yeah, Dave Pack General. So Andy Williams, Tony Bennett. Yeah, I, th- I think we've probably got a very similar kind of taste, mate. I like that stuff. Um, Mumford & Sons. I saw Mumford & Sons live. I went to... Um, let me just, I'll tell you what, I'll flip across the main screen while we have a chat for five minutes. Um, tea in the Park, up in Scotland. First time I ever went to Tea in the Park. Mumford and Sons were the headline act on the Friday night. And I remember, first time I'd been to like a proper festival, me and, and, and my wife, what was my girlfriend back then, and her sister and, I, and her boyfriend, who's now her husband now. Um, and like just, I think it was my first experience really of a festival, just being absolutely leathered dancing around at like kind of nearly midnight to uh, to Mumford and Sons. I just, it was such a, like it's a kind of, it's one of those like memories that you'll never ever forget. I had such a good time. Um, Blizzard is saying Man of War is awesome. Duffy McElsey says he painted lots of stuff to the Clash's London Calling. There's a tune mate, London Calling. Stotty's Man Cave says Hailung, their music is great, the game too. Never heard of them mate. Uh, Trent Reznor's fantastic says James Arm. I'll have to check them ones out as well. Matrix soundtrack, good shout, mate. Good shout. Uh, Paul Emerson with all his dead stuff he's doing. He's been listening to Frank uh, Kle- Klepaki and the Tiberian Sons. It's really inspiring. I'll have to listen now for that, mate. I'm, I'm getting. I'll have to go back and check through all of these. Uh, check through all the chat tonight. Um, um, I'll have to come back. Sorry, I'll have to come back through and check all the chat and uh, catch up on all the different uh, all the different music recommendations. Lawson Deming, good evening Lawson, I saw your name pop up my phone before I started the live chat tonight, a new subscriber, thank you very much for joining me, he says, just discovered your channel, really like your discussions of various miniature games, being kind of disappointed by the clunkiness of Kill Team's rules, and looking for an alternative, um, and then he said, before it moved, I feel like Dead Zone might be a good option, but I'm also looking at Beyond the Gates of Antares, have you played it at all? I haven't played Beyond the Gates of Antares, what I would suggest is, if you've played Bolt Action, or you know anybody that's played Bolt Action, it plays very, very similar to Bolt Action. It's like a sci-fi version of Bolt Action. Um, but but from my personal experience, it's quite hard to get a game of Gates of Antares. It's, it's not a very well, like not a very popular game, if you like. It's not very well played. Um, I I would I would 100% recommend Dead Zone. If Kill Team's not for you, mate, I would 100% recommend Dead Zone. Um, I, if you go back through, through my channel, I think I did a Monday night live stream on Dead Zone about how to get started in Dead Zone. If you want to put that on the background one night while you're sitting painting something, I think it was like about a two hour like live stream and we spent quite a big chat going into how de- what makes Dead Zone different, um, some of the races in Dead Zone, uh, that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, that's what I'm painting up tonight. I'm, I'm painting up Dead Zone models tonight. Uh, yeah, so if Kill Team's a bit clunky for you, I would definitely recommend giving Dead Zone a try. The rules are free as well, so you can download the rules from the Mantic website. And they'll kind of, that, that'll at least give you a, a bit of an insight into it, whether it's like, something that you are interested in. Uh, but yeah, thanks for joining the channel. Uh, thank, thanks for joining the chat tonight and coming to the channel. Um, Peter says, you haven't heard of Man of War? <laughs> no, I haven't. I honestly haven't. Seriously, Battle Him by Man of War was the ideal song to start a Kings of War game. Um, if, if it's kind of like metal music, if, it, if it's like kind of like that kind of stuff, I know very little in that kind of, uh, in that wheelhouse, mate, to be fair. Uh, VG says, uh, I've seen Godspeed, you Black Emperor live. Fantastic show. Um, my first ever concert, the first ever uh, concert I went to was Guns N' Roses, actually. Um, I, I, left, I left school, do, I did my kind of GCSE exams, which is the exams you take in the UK when you're like uh, in the last year of school. 
I did my GCSE exams, finished them on the Monday, and then went to see Guns N' Roses on the Wednesday. So I'll have been 16 years old, I think it was. It was 1992. So, uh, yeah, and, and I think they were, they were touring with the Use Your Illusion tour at the time. So that'll kind of date it. That'll tell you when it was. Um, Mr. Trey Guy says, I, I often zone out as well. I can hear everything, but I'm like a zombie making weird noises. That's me, mate, as well, yeah. Paul saying, you say sci-fi is sci-fi, but I've recently tried to re-watch Star Trek The Next Generation, which hasn't aged well. Uh, yes, I, I, I know what you mean. When I say sci-fi, sci-fi, what I mean is that they're all... They're all trying to be set in a, in a, in a future or, or a version of a science fiction future. So even though it's old, doesn't mean that it's kind of like it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. If you like, it doesn't they date that way. But I know what you mean. I think sometimes sometimes special effects date. Sometimes the storylines, to be fair. But Star Trek, I like I say, Star Trek's not something I've ever I've ever uh, I've ever really getting into. Um, Luke, see, I thought Bright was good, but felt more of a proof of concept than a complete effort. Um, I only ever watched it at once. I maybe have to go back and watch it again. I enjoyed it at the time, though. Jimmy Newton's in. Good evening, Jimmy Newton. Mike G's in as well. Says, check his bank account before logging in. And I'm a legit Patreon member. <laughs> yes, mate. Okay. I think your name's still on the screen as well. You are a legit one. There it is. Third one down. Mike G. Thank you very much, mate. Your name will be at the end of tonight's video as well, because I added you in today. Um, Tony Howells saying, Gustav Holtz and Edward Elger. Great game and music. Um... Um, Alan does majority does he I didn't realise that and I thought you did you tend to build stuff and do the base cutting and then you move it on it must be nice to have a team <laughs> um, Busey said don't use toothpicks for eyes buy the stick on ones from Amazon that rattle around Paul Heaton that's the name I was trying to remember mate thank you very much um, Bonner says give the dead south a listen great band oh, I'll have to check them out hello Jimmy G by the way nice to see you in um Peter says, finally a group I've not heard of but seen live, The Clash. What a night that was. What? Not only heard of, that's right, I thought he said not heard of. Um, Jacob says his favourite concert was Rush's 30th anniversary in St. Louis. Rush is a, is a band that I only probably more recently kind of got into, actually. And I, I, tell you, I tell you when I started listening to Rush was after reading, um, or oh, what's it called again? Uh, let me just go back to the painting camera. Was after reading uh, Ready Player One. Because obviously there's quite a lot about Rush at the end of that, at the end of that book, isn't there? Um, and I and I I I'd heard of the band, but I didn't really know any of their music. And I think after I read Ready Player One, I went back and uh, kind of checked them out. And yeah, the, the, what what a band they were! What a band! Um, we've got Dustin in as well. It's gamers ADHD. Nice to see you, fella. How are you doing? Uh, Tony says it goes Guns N' Roses in St James Park, supported by Soundgarden. It was at, um, it wasn't St. James's Park, mate. It was at um, Gateshead Stadium. But yeah, they were they were supported by, by Soundgarden. I think they were supported by Soundgarden and Gun, I think it was as well, who really at the time only had one song out, which was uh, Word Up, which was the original, um, I forget who sang the original one now. Um, but yeah, the song, like when, when you think of the song Word Up, it was that one, but they did a bit of a rock version of it. So I think Gun were like the kind of like the the first the warm up act, and then Soundgarden. Um, but I, I saw so many different bands at Gateshead Stadium over the years when they used to do them. I, I've seen Bon Jovi there. I've seen Brian Adams there, and I and, and it, I get mixed up with who the support acts were because I've seen I've seen Van Halen support. I've seen um, the Pretenders were a support band one night. Um, so I've seen I've seen a few bits and pieces and stuff like that, but yeah, like like live bands I've se I've seen U two in Leeds, I've seen um, seen Kanye West in Newcastle, I've seen Oasis a couple of times, I've seen um, I've seen the Killers a few times. Uh, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of I went through a bit of a phase where I did I, I went to a lot of like I wasn't gaming I I wasn't gaming at that at, at that particular time I just. I was like uh, I went I went to see a lot of like live shows and stuff like that, so yeah. And like like I said, I've said many times before, but like, like my gaming stuff really started when I when when I had the the twins and and I really wasn't I didn't have the free time to go out and do stuff like that like I used to. Cameo, that's who it was who sang Word Up. Thank you very much, Mike G. Um, Noxy's in as well. Nice to see you, Noxy. How are you doing? 
says he made it in for a Wednesday. Um, Jacob says, second favourite, ICP's Hello Wicked. Not the biggest ICP fan, but the concert was a blast. ICP. Wow, that's not a name. I think I, I even maybe I've missed that. Um, Fat Cat says, what well, everyone's first and last gigs. Page and Plant, Led Zeppelin and Paul Simon, two extremes. My last gig, oh, what was my last gig I went to? Um, I'm trying to think now. I can't actually think what my last gig was. The last thing I ever went to like a big kind of a big crowd for a stadium was a boxing match, actually. I went, oh, I'll tell you what my last gig was. It was ACDC. I took my two boys to Wembley Stadium to see ACDC. That was that just reminded me because I went I went to see I went to see a boxing match at Wembley Stadium, um, and that, and that reminded me yeah so so Guns and Roses was my first ever gig and ACDC was my was my last gig, so yeah I haven't, I haven't been anywhere in quite some time to see any live music, so yeah that that, that was my two anyway I can be proud of those two I'm I'm quite I'm quite happy I've been to see those ones. Um, ACDC did not disappoint either. I was quite happy with them. Um, yeah, the red cod piece chap. That's it. Cameo. <laughs> Paul saying his first gig was being Iron Maiden and his last one was Lacuna Coil. Wow. Never heard of that one, mate. Did you enjoy it? Peter Nicholas' first gig was Judas Priest and his last one was Blondie. Peter Nicholas, I can't even begin to imagine you at a Judas Priest concert, mate. But what that, that two two awesome bands to have seen, mate. Two awesome bands. Um, Noxie says cameo and gun, then corn, then little little did little mixing as well, Noxie. Wow, <laughs> there you go. Um, and Peter said he hasn't been any gigs for an age. <laughs> Pixie lot. Greg Thompson, good evening, Greg Thompson. How are you doing? He said his first gig was Megadeth, supported by Alice in Chains in '91 at Hammersmith. Wow, mate. There's a uh, there's a good choice. I tell you what, we we really are having a, a different chat tonight, and I'm enjoying this. Because if I, if I chat about gaming all night tonight, then I just run out of stuff to talk about next week. <laughs> so I appreciate us talking about other things. Um, let me just uh, a little bit more of this in here. Um, Peter Kuman first gig was Gorky, a Belgian band, and Lat Dimitri Vegas. And like Mike for the wife. Wow, mate. Uh, choices I've never heard of. Uh, Tim Kelly, last gig was the chats. Aussie Punk, first was Simple Minds. Oh, nice, mate. I, I, I saw Simple Minds at... I saw them at Edinburgh Castle, I think it was. At one New Year. They, they sang One New Year's Eve. I, I, went, to, I, went, to New, I went to Edinburgh with, with my wife for New Year. And Simple Minds kind of were, were the live act there. Um, I've seen loads at like live acts but with going to festivals and stuff like that so I almost don't even uh, include them sometimes because I've seen some amazing bands like um, uh, to go and see them live like, this, I, like I saw the Stranglers at a festival that were amazing really enjoyed seeing the Stranglers um, Two Door Cinema Club big big fan of them they're one of the one of the, the, the best bands I've seen live um, What's the other one called? Imagine Dragons. Great band. I've seen them live at a festival. But I almost like... Sometimes there's... I, I just I buy the ticket to go to the festival for the, for the weekend away, actually. And the, and the lineup is sometimes almost like secondary. So I almost don't cl include them as bands that I've seen like live, really. Um, Mike G says, first show was Suicidal Tendencies and Megadeth. His last show was Lionel Richie. <laughs> there's, there's a completely different uh, different mix, mate. Um, or oh, some of them jumped off the top of my screen. Let me go back. Um, Scott, last gig was Slipknot in Cardiff. Wow. Tony Booth Leiden, first gig levelers in Middlesbrough Town Hall. And was just, last one was Jasper Carrot and the guy from ELO. <laughs> the levelers, mate, are a good band. I like, I like the levelers as well. When I was at college doing my ear levels, which I dropped out of, um, the, the, the levelers were my band then, actually. Um, my student days. Start his man cave was Blur, and the last one was Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones not a bad show, man. I would like to have seen them. Noxie said, "I wish Pixie, Pixie Lot was my last gig." <laughs> Mike G first. Oh yeah, what was I said? Anna saying first gig was Green Day. Last one was Kiss up in Newcastle last year. Oh, I remember seeing the signs, seeing that Kiss were playing. Uh, Jimmy Newton first one was Big Country and Folkestone. 
Big Country, I, I quite like some of their music. And obviously their, their big song, Big Country, or In a Big Country. Uh, last was Bonzo Dog Band at Usher Hall in Edinburgh. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing how many different bands there are I've never even heard of. William Lake's just subscribed. Thank you, William Lake. Um, Noxy said, Lacuna Coil. I don't even know the name, mate. Um, Scott says his first proper gig was Rod Stewart in Glasgow, but seen loads at Party in the Park. Uh, Greg Thompson, Metal and Warhammer has always been linked. Ball Throw released a floppy disc. We just chatted about that mate earlier on actually. Um, Duffy Mikowski, his first gig at the Allman Brothers and George Thorogood in Rapid City. Most recent gig was Massive Attack. I like Massive Attack mate, big fan of Massive Attack. Um, Kieran saying there, he's, I too a manager band as a second job at often at festivals in Europe with countless bands but mostly too drunk to remember who they are. <laughs> I guess you must you must have come across and, and met a few where uh, well-known people are made in that case. Um, Yoakum, first concert was ZZ Top. Nice choice, mate, nice choice. Uh, and, and he was going to lock and pour, but they've had to cancel. Uh, Mark Cawley, first gig was the House Martins. Last one was the Kaiser Chiefs. I've seen the Kaiser Chiefs as well, mate. Yeah, they're good. Uh, uh, two different bands, mate, but both good as well. Ramstein, Tony, I can't even imagine you, Tony, at a Ramstein one, mate. <laughs> you just seem so calm and so quiet. <laughs> Paul said his first gig was Simply Red, last gig was Musica de Venezia at school. I can't, I'm not even going to say it, but it was in Venice. And his last gig in the UK was the Stone Roses. I never did see the Stone Roses. I, I liked the Stone Roses, but I never did get to see them. Um, Shed Seven and Faithless, a couple of good bands there as well, mate. Uh, Christian, what was yours? First gig was Vanessa May, last gig was Vanessa May. Does that mean you've only been to see one or you're a big Vanessa May, May, May fan and you've been to see her many times, mate? Uh, Jimmy, first gig was Wishbone Ash and last night out was indie wrestling. You're never too old for fun. Uh, and as if by magic, along comes Crabby Vision talking about wrestling. Nice to see you, mate. How are you doing? He says, sorry, he's late. I'll catch up tomorrow. You don't have to catch up, mate. Just nice to see you pop in, mate. Um, Mike, uh, sorry, Busey seen his first live gig he went to was Ro Ronnie Size. Ronnie Size. There's a there's a choice, mate. He's worried about getting let in. Um, um, Tony Howell. First was when his father took him to work. That was when the venue manager saw Queen and met the band. Oh, Tony, you legend. I would like to have seen Queen. I was a Queen fan when I was younger, but I think like age wise, I, I was too young to have been like sort of uh, sort of going to see them and stuff. Um, so yeah like kind of uh, that's, that's the band I would have liked to have seen in the heyday if you like at their peak yeah well folks I think I'm kind of I'm just touching up now anywhere where I've kind of made any mistakes or anything like that doing a little bit of touch up stuff anywhere where I've kind of slopped the paint anywhere just checking them out a little bit maybe a little bit of highlighting on the on the muscles a bit here as well but uh, I'm pretty much calling these done. Because you know, you know me. I'm, I'm more about just having things finished. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I do need to do. I need to, I need to paint the, the nails on the, on the feet. So we'll do that bit. Um, dive in a little bit. Dustin saying, doing all right, mate. Wish I could be painting, but it's, alas, it's work time. Still made good progress on his marauders. He's got eight commandos, two snipers, a Hulton Captain done. Nice one, mate. Glad to hear it. Um, Luke saying, Green Deer and Hasey Dixie. Wow, mate. I've heard of Green Deer. <laughs> the other one I haven't. Vincent said it was a punk band in some shabby basement in Berlin. The air was barely breathable and we paid him beer. Oh, nice one. Um... David says, lost track of time, gluing his fingers together. Um, Krabby says, fun fact, I've never been to a gig. Krabby, are you just not into kind of music enough, mate, to have, have, have wanted to kind of see one particular band, or is it just, uh, it just the opportunity never arose, mate? I think I have to put a bit of a wash over these claws as well, because they're a bit... I don't want them to stand out too much. So. Um, um, where are we up to? 
because <laughs> you say it means he's only ever been to one bit, one gig. Uh, Kieran saying one show complete moment here. We're going to conversation between Lemmy and Ice T at Hellfest in France. <laughs> Uh, only one I'd be interested in would be RHCP. I don't even know what that is, mate. It, it just shows that my musical tastes are varied, but they're not that varied, that's for sure. Um, Tony says, heavy rock and metal are his main music fixes from New Wave of British heavy metal through a thrash. Huge Metallica fan. I, th I think I actually, I, I do remember you telling me you were, and I think you, you'll have had like a, a heavy metal t-shirt on or something once when I've seen you as well. So I kind of knew it was your kind of music, but I think it's one of those things, isn't it? When you, when you meet somebody for the first time and... Uh, you said, uh, how can I put this without sounding funny? I, if you were to pick somebody's musical tastes just by looking at them, I think I'd be. I think maybe I wouldn't have picked you as a as a metal head, mate. Maybe that's what I'd, how, how I'd put it. But I can completely see. I think it's funny you hear a lot of people in the tabletop gaming who are proper into their metal. Like I mean, I I, I enjoy some kind of metal bands and stuff like that, but not not really heavy stuff. Um, but I think I'm, I'm potentially kind of in a bit of a minority, really. There's, there's a lot of metalheads in tabletop gaming. And I wonder why that is. I, I wonder why that is. But they do kind of seem to go hand in hand. Um, um, where are we up to here? VJ saying first gig was Pearl Jam in Australia. Last gig before the Rona was New Order. New Order's New Order don't tour with um oh, I forget what he's called now, but basically the guy that used to be the lead singer of New Order. He's a bit bitter about it, isn't he now? Or am I mixing them up with somebody else? Ah, oh, no, I'm I'm thinking about a different band completely. Ignore me, mate. Um Dustin saying first gig was Ice House. Best gig was Rammstein, last gig does an American idiot. The musical count, it's not really green day. Of course it counts, mate. Of course it counts. The musical is still a gig. Um, right. What I'll do is I'll let those feet dry. I think I'll go, like, I'll just literally go, oh yeah, I need to do something with these now, don't I? They just look a bit flat there. Oh, I do need to highlight up some of that red because I've missed a few bits from that one. Um, Blizzard says, Queen is the reason you got into music, they lit the fire. Yeah, I I think kind of my earliest memories of kind of like listening to music, uh, I, I had an uncle who was who was massively into Queen, um, ELO, that kind of stuff. And I think my like my early format of music was basically from, from some of his stuff that I used to listen to. Like my dad was, was or still is to be fair, it's not like my dad's anywhere. Um, his like musical tastes were much more Elvis, Beatles, that kind of stuff. So I... I'm still a big fan of like the Beatles and sort of like that era of like 60s music and stuff. But um, yeah, my my uncle, who's sadly not, no longer with us now, uh, he's, uh, his musical tastes were much more kind of uh, Queen, ELO. I'm trying to think what else he used to listen to as well, but that was where I kind of uh, got a lot of my early, early musical tastes from, I think. Um, VG says, working in the entertainment industry would probably be easier to see who I haven't seen. I, I can imagine, mate. So what, what's your kind of musical taste to me? Because like, what kind of music do you play? Um, and what kind of music would you like listen to yourself? I assume you don't really want to listen to kind of, like, like do, do you basically play like, like, probably like, like dance music type stuff? Is that the kind of stuff that you do for a living? And, and would that, like, is that your kind of taste as well? Even though you might not like, listen to it at home or whatever. Is that uh, is that a good a taste of yours as well? I suppose you have to like it to be playing it all the time, don't you? Um, Noxie's having a chat there. People chatting. VJ saying, been over to Europe a few times with various tours, built an entire trips over to see Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode, do you know what it is? They're not a band I would necessarily kind of say that I was a huge fan of, but I like so much of their music. It's like, yeah. Um... Uh, Tony says, really loving Southern Rock lately. Really loving Cadillac 3 right now. Do you know what it is, mate? I keep, I keep meaning to kind of expand my horizons with some music and stuff, because it's, like, I, I hear the odd, the odd kind of tune and stuff like that. Because I don't, I don't, like I said before, when I used to travel a lot, I very rarely used to listen to music in the car. Because um, I, 
I'm kind of well known for having lots of speeding points <laughs> on my license because music tends to make me drive fast. I end up getting caught up in the beat of the music and uh, putting my foot down. And when you're doing as many miles as I used to do, um, having a rotating nine points on my license was a bit of a a bit of a hazard. So I, I tend to listen to like to talk shows or um, podcasts or audio books, essentially to kind of uh, to chill out a bit, really. Um, so yeah, I don't. So I, I didn't really listen to a lot of music in the car. So I, I don't really. Dis, I never discovered that many new bands. But I used to listen to like a lot of like. Um, like Radio 5 music stuff. Um, David Ma um, Mackay, nice mate, says to see you. He says, Gigs, can't remember the first band I saw live, probably a local band in a club. Last time I've seen were Ghost and they were awesome. Yeah, of course, of course, RHCPs, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Insane Clown Posse, never heard of them, mate. Um, Blizzards, KMFDM. <laughs> uh, KMFDM. No, oh, I've got no idea. I'm not going to try and guess that one. Uh, Greg says, just listened to Splinter Minds, Splinter Minds podcast on YouTube. They were game testers for four. Do you know what it is, mate? This is a really good podcast. Obviously, keep listening to Peyton here, but, I, but do check it out. I will do, mate. In fact, I haven't got my pen handy. I was going to write that name down. Uh, because I listened to um, Tabletop Tactics, did a video today as well, when they were talking about um, play testing. And to be fair, they didn't give a lot away, because I, I think, obviously, they're, they're still under like an embargo of what they can and can't talk about. So they didn't give a lot away, really. However, um, it's funny because, I mean, they seemed really positive about it. And I, and I take it on face value, I assume they're really positive about it. But I, I couldn't help but feel, and, and I don't watch a lot of tabletop tactics, so I can't tell you whether it was kind of like genuine excitement for the game or whatever. But I, I couldn't help but feel that it was a case of, like, we were really honoured to be asked how could we possibly say anything bad about it. That was my overwhelming feeling from, from being completely new to the channel. I've never watched any tabletop tactics stuff in the past because I've never been that close to 40k stuff, to be fair. Um, but it'd be interesting if anybody does listen to their stuff. Like, what's, how do you feel about it? I mean, do you, do you, just, do you just trust them? Do you, do you know them well enough as a channel to say that you just you trust what they say kind of thing? But I, I couldn't help but getting that overwhelming feeling of they asked us to do this. We did it for free because I know, I know they weren't paid to do any player testing. Um, our entire business model revolves around doing 40k battle reports. Why would we want to say anything bad about them? That, I, and that, that's a horrible thing to say, but that, that, was, that was my kind of my overriding gut feeling listening to it. It was almost like it was almost too positive. I, I would have liked to have seen them say, Actually, I didn't really like. I didn't really like this bit, and and maybe the, the bits they don't like, they can't talk about yet. So maybe maybe I'm doing them a disservice, but I, I couldn't help but feeling that they were just very very happy about everything. Um, Scott saying Monday night topic right there. Oh, tell me tell me what you mean, um, Scott. I don't I don't know if uh, I, unless I missed that, mate. Maybe I missed something in the chat. Um, Busy see all this talk reminds me of a game I used to play called Find the Pants. A friend had his own bedroom covered in five flyers and hid small triangle pants made from Rizzler. <laughs> VJ says Peter Hook, the old bass player. And yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking of, mate. Yeah, I think it was actually. Um, Tony seen, wish he's seen Queen Live and Zeppelin. Um, oh, K KMFDM. That's the kind of music, isn't it? Like dance music, isn't it? What's, K what's KMF stand for? KMF. I feel like I should know this. Uh, someone on a stage making music, or at least some rhythmic sounds, counts as a gig to me. Yeah, e exactly. <laughs> I found the pants got the spliff. <laughs> well, that's all just uh, jumped really quickly there now. Um, Interzone says, first gig was E. Tony House is burning something in New Order. They had an acrimonious split. That's maybe what I'm thinking about, mate. Um, Roxanne, first gig, Sleeper. Sleeper was a good band. Last gig, The Midnight. I don't know them, mate. Uh, Christian says, so far, Andy's chats have been top troll free. We've got a great bunch in the community, so that helps. I think you guys are, you guys are having a mod chat, aren't you? <laughs> about uh, about modern, uh, modern live streams. Uh, first gig, ELO. Last gig, ELO, with a few in between. Good choice in the zone. Nice one. Noxy said, as a kid, remembers playing a record to death. It had Ghostbusters and Van Halen jump. <laughs> That's a good choice. 
Fat Cassis went to see Queen a couple of years ago when they were touring. Can never replace Freddie, but Adam Lambert puts his own stamp on the songs. I've heard that actually. There's a lot of. There was a friend, a guy I used to work with a long time ago, who was a huge Queen fan, massive Brian May fan, and and he actually said that um, Adam Lambert was, you know, it. You, you can't. You, you can never replace Freddie, but Adam Lambert did a really good job of kind of filling filling the, the gap on in stage if you like. Um, do you see Jeff Lynn from ELO in October, but just cancelled? Jeff Lynn, is it, is it Jeff Lynn that does a really good um, War of the Worlds thing? Is it, is it Jeff Lynn that does that as well? Unless I'm mixing it up with somebody else. Um, Blackjack, also known as Leadfoot. Oh, yeah, oh, God, yeah. <laughs> when it comes to speeding, mate. Do you know what? It is? It's not even like I get caught doing, like, except, like, well, they are expensive. That's why I keep getting caught. But it's always like. Like I've been, I've been, I, my points have drifted away now because I've, I've, I've kind of obviously kind of learned to, to drive like a ninety-year-old woman. Um, um, but like it's things like seventy-eight, like getting caught doing seventy-eight on a motorway, getting caught doing fifty-five in a fifty zone. It's that kind of stuff. It's that kind of like, like you know, like in a in a fifty-mile average, fifty-mile an hour average speed zone getting done for doing 55 it's been that kind of stuff mate but i, I just got to a bit of a, a routine of constantly getting points three would drop off and three would come back on again um jonathan whiteborn says saw the wedding present at red cabal first uh stone roses at wembley good ah, nice one mate robert zung saying yeah game's over a minor loss do not advance tanks without infantry support <laughs> yes mate good wise words mark coley first song he ever bought is kung fu fighting by carl douglas <laughs> the so the first song I ever bought myself, like with my own money, because I remember getting a record player when I was a kid for Christmas, and my my mum and dad obviously bought it for me, or Santa Claus brought it, um, and the, and the single I got with it was Super Trooper by ABBA, and I'm, my mum must have, must have bought that for herself because I can't stand ABBA. I not only can I not stand Super Trooper, I cannot stand ABBA. So I'm pretty sure she bought that for herself. But the first song I ever bought like, with my own money. I remember going to the shop and there was a, a record shop in Sunderland called Our Price. And I bought two singles on the same day. I bought Hold Now for a Hero by Bonnie Tyler. And I bought Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen. I bought those two. Those were my, my, my first records that I bought myself. Blonde by Atomic. Or Atomic by Blondie, sorry. Yeah, that's a good fair first one. 17 Varnish hit minutes waiting for bases in the morning. Nice work, mate. Cracking through them. Uh, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. So thank you, VJ. <laughs> I knew it was a name. I knew it was a name. I kind of it was similar, wasn't it? Um, um, I'll just dive in here. I think it's. Um, I think I'm in the right place now. Anyway, VJ seen his music series pretty wide. Everything from Buck to Slipknot, Time Cop, nineteen eighty four, to Simon and Garfunkel, Jimi Hendrix to Skrillex. Nice tastes, man. Nice tastes. VJ says there are only two kinds of music. I don't like country and western. I don't think I've really listened to a lot of country and western to say I don't like it. Um, Scott Lomas says, why majority of war games are metalheads? Right, now, now I know what you're talking about, mate, for, for a, to a topic. Um, good evening, Justin. How are you doing? He says, they would definitely say if, the, if it was rubbish. They're generally always honest about GW's content. That's fair enough, mate. I, like I say, I, I don't listen to them. I, I've not really watched a lot of their stuff to really kind of give a, um, like a, a to understand whether it was like a, a balanced opinion or whether they're, whether they're generally always really positive or whatever, I couldn't really tell. But uh, I, I, it, it, it was it was just interesting to to hear that it was all positive, and that and that there was nothing that they didn't really that they didn't really like. Um, but maybe I, maybe it was just like I say, it was on in the background again as well while I was doing other stuff. So, but yeah, if. If if the, if it's if it's a channel mate that you kind of that you would that you take that word for it, I'll take that word for it as well. Like I say, I don't know them well enough. Um, VJ says doesn't listen to much dance music outside of work. I can imagine, mate. Um, VJ saw such thing as Queen without Freddie. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's to be fair, they've they've done a pretty good job of keeping Queen going, haven't they? I mean, there was the the We Will Rock You musical. Um, did pretty well it's keeping keeping Queen music going as well, so they've managed to keep keep Queen alive. How are we doing for time, by the way, folks? What is that? That's only ten o'clock, isn't it? 
I will, I will have to find something more to paint because I, I am literally just repainting bases now just to kind of give them a second coat um, while I'm waiting for those feet to dry so I can put a bit of a wash on them and darken down the feet. Because folks, believe it or not, I'm pretty much finished my dead zone challenge. <laughs> so yeah, I've managed to do it. It took me four live streams, I think it is, to paint my dead zone minis. Um, but I did it. I've done it. Um, Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds. Yeah, thank you everybody for, for putting me right. VG is saying, still remember the first time I dropped acid at a dark room and listened to War of the Worlds. I remember the first time I heard War of the Worlds. I was at a, a, a Cub Scout camp. Um, uh, and the music proper freaked me out. I was only quite young at the time. And I think it was, I remember hearing it playing and it was just, it was just freaky music. I'm quite happy to listen to it now. Apparently, the audio book for War of the Worlds is, um, I don't know if it's like the musical thing, it's, I think it's like a reading of the, of the book or something like that, but it's meant to be fantastic. Um, so somebody told me once, not listening to it myself. Right, have I got any more bits I need to touch up? I'll just then um, wash it now, I think. The stage version of Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds is amazing. Yeah, I've heard that as well, Tony. Um, yeah, Jeff Lynn said, I, I knew Jeff Lynn was the singer of ALO. I wasn't sure whether he did the light. Like, I keep hearing that the Jeff, and now I know I remember it's Jeff Wayne's War of the Worlds, but I, I wasn't sure whether the two were the same thing in my head. Um, Mark was saying, he's back. Nice to see you, mate. Got Future Boy in saying, good morning. Hello, fella. Um, Noxie says, what about the epic hard rock Hallelujah by Lordy? Never heard of it, mate. Yogam, first record he bought was Europe, The Final Countdown. There's a tune. Um, Justin LB saying, narrative battles are great and they put in a lot of effort. I, I, I kind of got the impression from listening to them today that they were, I think they're like, I know um, Lawrence is kind of very much a, a competitive gamer. He, he, he he, do, he always does well at like the Warhammer World events and things like that, so I know he's a kind of a hardcore gamer, if you like. Um, but yeah, I got the impression from listening to the day that they, they, they're much more about the narrative battle reports. I'll have to check one of them out. I like, see I've not really watched a lot of like main 40k stuff. Um, what was this? Is it only 150 points? Yes, so this model, this model, my leader, and then Eight of these fellas is 150 points, mate. They are rats, like, aren't they? So they're gonna they're gonna take up a bit more, a bit more point, a bit uh, a few more bodies, I think, on the table. Um, you're gonna see Lordy won, and I think it's the only time Finland has won the Eurovision. Ah, right. I think I know which one you mean now. Um, Luke, see how many minis? There are eight, nine, ten, eleven minis, mate. In my 150 points, but I think I think these big ones are about like 20 points each. To be fair. So about 40 points in them two big minis. Um, Noxy said his dad had the vinyl of War of the Worlds, sold it on eBay, went for 60 quid. Um, Robert says, I'm here, no hobby getting done, got the iron out. Ah, you're just get, getting a bit of housework in, mate. Nicely done. All right, so I've got a bit of Agrax wash. I'm just gonna pop that over the, the claws, the, the kind of like the toes, just to dull them down a little bit where I've, I've put that in. And then I think, folks, that is pretty much me done on these bad boys. Because as you know, I'm a big fan about just getting stuff finished. Um, Starty's Monkey of Best Live Album, Nirvana Unplugged in New York. So I wish I could have been there. Nirvana Unplugged was a good album, actually. Um, Queen 1980, uh, Wembley 1986 was the, was the live album I remember kind of listening to the most um, I don't think I had a lot of live albums to be fair but that's the one I always remember um, Mark was saying are you ironing the brain mats <laughs> I cut one of my mats up the other day so I, I had a 6x4 mat that I'd cut in half a while ago to make two uh, four by three mats for when I made that you know the four by three board that I had hanging on the wall so I cut I cut the mat down for that and um, I 
obviously you didn't need two, two exactly the same kind of thing. So I've cut one of those down to be the right size for 40K smaller size. And actually when you lay it on a six by four table, it's not, it's not that different. I mean, obviously it is different, but um, it's quite interesting really, because I think you can play up to a thousand points on that size. And I think somebody was somebody put a picture in the in the Facebook group this morning, I think, or it might have been in our it might have been our Discord group for the Patreons. It was surprising actually that about five hundred points of like Marines was about sixteen models, something like that. Um, David Denise says, "If you like Queen, I highly recommend the Struts. The front man sounds exactly like a young Freddie Mercury." Oh, I have to check him out, mate. Thank you for that. Um, Peter Nicholas has almost done these neck runs around the spare parts. Um, one of my favourite albums, uh, actually, wait, okay, before I want that, I definitely have to do something with these front on these. I just feel like they're missing something. I don't, do I want to put stripes on them? Do I want to put some kind of, some kind of glow to them or something? Do I want them to be red? No, I'm just going to kind of silver them up with some scratches and stuff, I think. Um, um, ping, uh, so yeah, the album I was going to mention was Rumours by um, Fleetwood Mac. I, I always come back and, and kind of just listen to that album. Um, it's just really, really good. I'm sure I'm, I'm kind of preaching to the choir. You know, there's nobody hasn't heard of Fleetwood Mac, but uh, that album just has some amazing songs on it. I'm just uh, putting a little bit of battle damage onto this using the uh, Necron compound dry paint. Just wetting it down a little bit and just trying to put some little, some fine scratches and stuff on it and make it look a little bit, uh, a bit worn. Have a little bit over the edges there, just to be knocked about. Noxie says, by the way, Andy, weird price differences. Mailed Colonel Stratton model over to Miranda as he's a tenner here. But 30 quid over there. Colonel Stratton. I don't know what model that is, mate. Uh, um, the US prices are always kind of... Uh, Always terrible, isn't it? And that was that's why GW stopped companies um, in the UK supplying companies over in the in the US and stuff because there was a few Whalen games uh, and a game in company called oh what was the other one called? Oh, I'm trying to remember the name now. There was another big company um, that was around in Mansfield. They had the um, Maelstrom games. That was them. Those two back in the day used to make a killing by selling uh, selling GW products overseas before GW put uh, put a stop on it. Um, uh, Marcus says, "Okay, vehicles look a bit crap. <laughs> They'll do for terrain. I can now see I've painted everything I own for Walking Dead." Marco, you are a beast, mate. Nicely done. Um, Rumours is a great album, love it, Noxy saying, yeah, yeah, really enjoy it. Uh, Christian saying he's got six in his Forge Fathers. Yes, that's the way to do it, mate. You'll crack through six models, get them done. VJ says, as a visual artist, I'm a huge fan of bands that have awesome visual presence, like Kiss, Kraftwerk, Stick, or Daft Punk. Daft Punk, Daft Punk's live set at Coachella was amazing, the first time they played there. Um, Luke said I watched or listened to your chat with Rob Oren today while I was priming kitchen cupboards it was an odd chat that jumped all over the place but you were great on it and really interesting answers when Rob asked me to, to kind of to be on his um, thank you by the way I, I appreciate that uh, I appreciate the nice words when he asked me to do that live chat or that live stream I said look is there anything you, spe uh, anything you specifically want to talk about and Robert said no, no, we'll just we'll just have a bit of banter. We'll just we'll just see how it goes and stuff. I'm sure I'm sure we won't have any problems having the conversation. So yeah, I didn't I didn't know where it was going to go, but uh, I can I can talk tabletop stuff all day. I I don't mind doing that. Um, Peter saying Iron Hand, Strachan, Katachan, Colonel. Um, Strachan is the metal armed Katachan guy. 
Or maybe maybe I'm getting mixed up with the. Um, I, I, I thought you were talking about the. Uh, oh, like the the store exclusive miniature, like a Katachan guy. Um, that's interesting, though, mate. If it's that much difference in prices, it's quite a lot. Scott's in oh, pretty much completely five Jakari Cavalite Warriors since the start of the street night. Nice one, mate. Tony Tiger says Pink Floyd visuals are stunning. Yeah, there's a, there's a few bands that are kind of um, spent like big on their. I think so. The, so the one I mentioned there about Daft Punk, I think they they asked for like a massive fee to do the Coachella Festival, but I think they then basically spent the entire fee on their set. They didn't make any money from it. They they put it all back into the, like the live set, and obviously they exploded from there because everybody was like, well, "Who the hell is this? This is unbelievable!" But they spent a fortune on their live set, and, and if you ever get a chance to watch it online, it was unbelievable. Right, folks, he says with orange juice stuck in his moustache. Um, oh, I've got a slight, a little bit more highlighting on the red to do, and then that's them. Uh, that's them. Done, done, done. Uh, and then I'll have to try and dig something out. Otherwise, it's uh, you'd have to just put up with me rambling. What's happening here? Something flashing up on my phone. That's a quick chat. Ah, oh, we're all right. Subscribers. Which is always nice. Right, so there's a few little bits. So I, on the kind of like on the, the nose here, I'm just kind of highlighting that up a little bit just to help it pop a bit. Um, uh, Blizz has the same Ghost are a great visual band. I don't think I really know Ghost, mate. I don't think I actually even know their name. There's a band I'll have to check out. Um, what's those ones done, I think? Uh, BJ says, I saw the Daft Punk Pyramid show when it toured Australia. Amazing show. Yeah, I think that Pyramid show, mate, was based upon the, uh, the Coachella one. Because I think they, they played in a, in a pyramid originally. But yeah, I, I watched... Um, there's a Daft Punk documentary, I think, either on Amazon or Netflix or something like that. And it's one of those I've put on in the background and, and watched. And uh, they talk about it there, basically. And just about how, how they basically ploughed every, pretty much every penny that they, they, they earned from that festival appearance straight back into that live show. But yeah, it kind of exploded from there. Some uh, some hell of a, some hell tunes from them. Really, really good. Just lighten these little bits up a little bit. Not looking too shabby. Oh, there's a bit of a little bit of skin I've touched on the tail there. So we'll just do that while I remember. Where's the pink? The bugman's glow. Um, Tony says I watched this, the stream with Rob he was a very generous and genuine host that gave you space to talk yeah I, I like Rob Rob's a great guy um, we've, we've kind of him and I have chatted very briefly kind of like uh, a couple of times just like in the background kind of thing and he'd, he'd mentioned previously about doing something together uh, and for one reason or another, we just never really got round to it. But yeah, it was, it's awesome. It's, it's nice to kind of be on somebody else's channel, really. It just it kind of gives you a little bit of an opportunity to, to, to meet some new people as well, get in front of some, uh, some new folks and kind of spread the word. Um, VG saying some bands are great visually, some have great visuals, yeah. VG Pink, a band that I did not enjoy live was Bon Jovi. They're, they basically just kind of, they were one of those bands that live, they just got up and played and then got off again. Um, Oasis were the same. I didn't enjoy them live either. They basically turned up, sang their songs and disappeared. It was that kind of, I might have got them on a bad, both bands, I might have got them on a bad night kind of thing, but that was how it was really. Um, 
Um, VG saying producing visuals for, for clubs and concerts is what I do for a living, hence the title VG. Video jerk. <laughs> um, mm, VG saying, so this stuff is very much my jam. Oh, I, I can appreciate that, mate, yeah. Um, Luke's in just looking at Aussie Org Bone Reapers. Is it just made do they look kind of way more sci fi than they do fantasy? I've got some here, mate. Let me let me pop one out and we might as well. Uh, wrong draw. I don't know, mate. I, th I think it's because they, they, they feel very Necron esque, I think. I mean, they, they're, they're fantastic sculpts, there's loads of detail in them. But, uh, I don't know. Uh, they're still pretty fantasy to me, mate, I think. But uh, but I quite, I quite like the models, to be fair. I've done nothing with them like since I, since I painted them. However, uh, let me just stand that up. However, the painting video I did of painting those models has done like something like about 18,000 views, so... Yeah, you, you, you can't deny if you, if you <laughs> cover G Games Workshop stuff, they do, it does all right video-wise. Peter Cooman says, need a subject to ramble. What's everyone's favourite model of all time? For me, Bertrand Le Brigand and crew, the old Bretonian Robin Hood wannabe. I, I said this before, I think it was one of my Friday questions. And the model, there's a... There's a um, there's a Skaven model that just always just, I always just think it's just the perfect pose where it's kind of, there's something about it's very triangular, like the way it's kind of perched and it's pointing something out with its arm back or something and it creates this almost like Y shape, triangular shape thing. It's just a fantastic kind of like pose to the model. Um, um, Christian was saying that he's considering dropping it to five, but figured the extra body would be more beneficial in the long run. Yes, and Forge Falls is hitting blast, blast through them quick, mate, can't you? Paul's saying um, it's a Green Knight, the first model I bought and painted, surely for the sake of painting it. Um, I, I'm not familiar with that, mate. Was that a Bretonian one as well? As well? Uh, Luke's saying look like the midpoint between human and Necron. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're very kind of that, that feel to them, to be fair, mate. Um, they, they wouldn't feel out of place in sci fi. I, I, I get that, like, to be fair. Well, folks, I, I have actually completed my uh, completed my challenge, I think. So these will I'll get these photographed tomorrow and get these up in the Facebook group. But um, I could maybe do with <laughs> see. This is the bit where you start pushing the button now. Start doing a little bit extra. I'll just get a little bit of white, I think, and I'll just kind of touch in where the eyes are, just to give a little bit of a little bit of look like there's like some kind of eye going on there. Because they are absolutely uh, tiny. Just gives a little bit of something to focus on. Um, Peter saying, yeah, I assumed it was a minimum of 150 points to paint all six Forge Fathers. Yeah, it, it was. It, it was basically, a, it was either 150 points or a start collecting box. If, if, if the start collecting box didn't quite make it to 150 points, I, I wasn't going to kind of make anybody paint more than that unless they really wanted to um so that's all it was mate um um it must have been every time you're looking at that one noxy since one of these podcasts andy does everyone keep asking you why you're saying like all the time <laughs> i think they've been too polite to ask probably mate but uh yeah it's definitely a northeast thing isn't it Seeing like, do you know what I mean? Like, we talked about this a couple of Wednesdays ago, didn't we? About, about kind of like local dialects and like strange, strange words that only certain regions have. I, I think, I think it was, um, was it you, Tim? If you're still around there, mate. I think Tim put something in our um, Patreon group the other day with, about like scouts about, about this. Uh, some, oh, was it? Oh, I can't remember what it said. Something about um, there's been a fire at Tesco. <laughs> the one scouser says to another scouser, "There's been a fire at Tesco," and uh, the other one goes, "Asda," and he goes, "No, Tesco." <laughs> Obviously, it sounds better with the accent, but 
I just found that uh, I found that it tickled me. I, w I worked with a few, with a few scousers when I was over in Manchester. So yes, it, it tickled me that one, mate. Um, where are we up to? Hobby swap done. Nicely done there, Kieran. Peter saying congrats on the finished team. Yeah, it's nice. Nice to. It's one of those things, mate, isn't it? Where like if I if I kick off a challenge, first of all, I have to take part in it. It's kind of a it's a little bit disingenuous to set everybody a challenge and then not do it myself. Um, <laughs> I also have to finish it as well. It's the same thing with the Kings of War challenge. I actually set that one up to motivate me to get my stuff painted. So I don't mind that one so much, really. But uh, yeah. Doesn't do too bad, does it, to get this stuff painted up? Let's get a little bit of light blue in these uh, in these lenses here. Oh, that one's been done. We'll get a bit in here. A little bit on there. Just to lighten this up a touch. Um, Peter says that the old metal version of the, um, the Hippograph one's still to paint. Old metal ones, yeah. Um, Dustin saying, if he was just painting all the Marauders I have, thought I was doing well until I realised a misty skyscraper, I'm sure I have a bomber too. Tim Kelly says that's the one. <laughs> yeah, mate, it was a, uh, it probably tickled me, mate. My wife's boss is from Liverpool, so I must admit I did, uh, I did share it. Uh, yeah, it's probably tickled me, mate. Uh... Lucy, and favourite mini of all time, the Dwarf Giant Slayer and the Hive Tyrant and Gene Stealer. It's amazing how many people pick GW models, though, isn't it? Um, Lucy, this would be a good one for the Facebook group. Post a pick of your favourite mini of all time. I think I did it a little while ago, mate, actually. It was one of the, like, the Friday questions, but by all means, like, you, you, do, you, you don't have to wait for me to kind of do that kind of stuff. If people want to set these kind of, like, these chats off and stuff, just... Just stick a post in. Just get, get them up and run it. It's always good to see what uh, what people think. I'm going to repaint that one, actually, because I think I've put the, the highlight in the wrong place. I wanted it at the back, and I, for some reason, I decided to put it at the front there. Randomly. Um, Dwarf Slayers always look good. Yeah. David, are there any currently favourite models? The Ghost Keel. I love the Mecha and the Ghost Keel. It's essentially a Titan from Titanfall and the Grey Knight is a whole or a close second. I don't think I know the Ghost Keel, mate. The name doesn't ring a bell anyway, but... Uh, Gotrick Gunnison. I even painted mine when I first got him. Nice one, mate. Tony Howell's finished his miniature swap. Oh, you're all putting me to shame. I haven't even picked a model for my miniature swap yet. It's a good job uh, Scott's a kind for giving the soul. I'll get there though. I will do, mate. I have to just prioritise stuff at the minute. That's the only thing. Um, right, that'll do. That'll do. That'll ding dang do. Ah, it's a towel battle suit. Towel's not something I know. For, do you know what is that? Let me, let me have a, let me Google it and have a look at while while we're chatting here. Let's have a look what this uh, towel battle suit looks like. I'm torn about, um, let me just flip this light on a second because I'm realising it's whitening up my face a bit. Um, I'm torn with um, what to pick up. I quite fancy a star collecting box, to do, even just to do as a video or something, you know, like as a bit of like, how long does it take me to paint a star collecting box? Um, I quite fancy doing that. But I'm not really sure which one I like. Tau Empire, let's have a look. Is it Tau or is it t Ow. <laughs> Uh, ghost keel battle suit. Ah, I can see which one you mean now, mate. Yeah. I can imagine painting those things would send me insane. I don't think I'd want to paint them on a regular basis, that's for sure. Um, yeah, let me... I'll tell you what, I'll flick across just while we're looking at it. So it was this one, folks. That's the one we're talking about, if you're not familiar with it. Ghost keel battle suit. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um, Luke's seen his favourite mini of all time from Heresy Miniatures in their version of the Delac Gang. Oh, I've not seen them once. Uh, Peter's seen if you play AOS, a Demon Star collecting box might have double value. 
No, I don't really play any Westmere to be fair. Um, but uh, let me have a quick look through it. the stuff I was kind of thinking of. Let's have a, let's have a quick search while I'm there. Because this is this is the thing when it comes to to forty k. I'm not really sure which one I'd uh, which one I'd like to paint. Because actually, let me show you some of my Space Wolf stuff that I painted in the past. So if I don't pull my microphone off. Uh, so. I have a box full here, and this was this was a star collecting box for Space Wolves. I think there's a new one coming, which has got Primaris stuff in it now as well. And so I had. Let me get a few bits and pieces out. There was like these fellows. Let me flick this light back on so we can kind of a bit more light on the subject. Uh, so there's three of these in the set. So they're all painted up. So there's that one. There is, oops, there's this one. And then there is a third one who's chewing on a chainsaw at the moment. This one as well. So they're all painted. Then I've got, um, I think there's about, let me count these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, there is 10, there's a 10 man squad of these. They're all uh, all painted up. I'll, I'll not show you the, all of them, I'll just pick a couple out while, we're, while I'm kind of looking through it. But yeah, there's, so there's 10 of these, like a 10 man, Whatever they call them, I forget their names now. Um, I've also got, I've still got, this is the only one I've not painted yet actually, which is the, the kind of the leader model. So he's still to paint up, but I've kept, I think I've got him like in two bits so I can get in and do the back of the cloak and stuff. So I've kind of pinned it at the waist so I can hold that one together. And then I've used, so I bought a kill team box, which had these, are they Reavers I think they're called? And I've painted these guys up Space Marine as well, uh, Space Wolf rather. So I've got like five of those, I think there is. So there's, there's him, there's this guy. And these were all uh, airbrushed, basically, just a really quick airbrush with a, with a uh, I forget what the colours were, I've got it written down somewhere. And then paint the, paint the heads, paint the guns, paint the, the bits of accompaniment stuff. Um, yeah, I, I quite like these Raven models actually, and th and that's the thing actually. I, I think I, I think I'd actually quite like a Space Marine Force, but it's so, it's kind of like so ubiquitous. If you like, they're everywhere. And then my kill team, I've got my, I've got my kill team squad, which I did Ultramarines. Um, so there, he was done for kill team. Um, this guy, done for kill team as well. And these are using the bases I came with Necromunda, actually. But, uh, and see, actually, I, I quite enjoyed painting these Ultramarines. Um, this guy as well. Um, and I got a couple of, I don't think this one was quite finished, actually, a couple of scouts. Um, yeah, so. There's just some, there's just something about the Primaris ones. I, I actually just, just quite like them, so. Um, but yeah, so I, I, I'm kind of torn, folks. I, I don't really, um, I don't really know what to do, because I could, I could expand what I've already got. To be honest, there's a star collecting box there for for um, like for Space Wolves, really, with those five man um, Reavers in there as well. Potentially, could be like, might not be far off five hundred points. To be honest, it might be a case of just kind of um, filling it out a little bit. So, I don't know, I don't know. Um, uh, Tim said I picked up some cheap tau initially for kill team, plan to paint them camo, try something new. That's the thing as well, like me, isn't it? It's, it's a nice opportunity just to try something new. 
like I I love Games Workshop miniatures. Like the the quality of them is fantastic. You you, you can't really complain about that. Yes, you, you can maybe complain about the price, but I, I can't I can't really kind of say that I don't I don't think I get value out of them. Like I get a lot of enjoyment from kind of painting them. Uh, not so much from building them. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, Peter Cooman saying, okay, I just thought you played since you flashed some Ossiog Bone Reapers. No, to be honest, mate, I, I actually I, I did intend to, to, to paint up a, a bit of an Ossiog Bone Reaper army just because I like I like the models. Um and to be honest, I was I was tempted to just paint them and sell them really. Um but then they came out in Warcry with rules, so I just hung on to them to, to use them in Warcry, mate. So that's why I've still got them really, otherwise I probably would have sold them. Um but let me uh let me pop I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me get this microphone cable so I've got a bit more space and I can uh, get a bit of a bit of movement and then I can show you a few other bits and pieces as well. So that's that's those. So speaking of AOS, excuse me while I just walk across here. Um I can keep talking to you anyway while I'm uh while I'm here because my microphone's still on, I can get a Grab a couple of models here and show you a couple of other things that I've painted in the past. Um, so this is let's go in there. I forget what he's called, but he's my my kind of like um uh he called I forget what he is, but this this was for my um my uh Beast Claw Raiders for AOS. This was my main kind of like, I don't even think he was like a leader, is he called? Oh, I forget what he is, but he's pretty, he had a pretty good move with that, with that, um, throwing that spear thing. And then I had a couple of these, which I might have to, I might have to zoom out a little bit actually. Let me just get the camera. You're going to see where all my yellow lines are now, where I zoom out. That's it. I'll put my hand there just to. I can't remember the names of these things now. It's been that long since I've uh, since I've played them. But so that was this one all painted up, and then actually, if I turn that off, that might help because it's kind of whiten that out a little bit. That was it. That was uh, that one there, and then this one here as well. I just really enjoy painting these kind of bigger models, which is why I'm thinking of something that's got like kind of like tanks or flyers or something that I'll probably just enjoy painting those up to. Um, I'm gonna put that back on now. Maybe, but yeah, I mean, just some of the, some of the details and stuff. Like, I, if I take my time, I'm not a bad painter, really. Like, I just, I tend not to take my time. I tend to prefer to just get it finished. But I, I was, I was quite proud of this one, really. I mean, it's. I don't think, let me just, kind of. Actually, I wonder if I do. That's it. It gets a bit more on the screen, so you can kind of see some of the detail and stuff of it, and like around that face and stuff. So I can paint when I want to, like when I actually take my time and try and like, and I, I think I actually just bought this originally just because I liked the model and I just wanted to paint it. But uh, yeah, so yeah, so I I've, so I've got like some AOS stuff. I, I did play AOS for a little while, but the game just it kind of changed a bit really, and it wasn't really what I wanted to play. When it uh, I think it was when it got to was it the General's Handbook twenty seventeen maybe it was. It kind of, or maybe 2018, it wasn't really what I wanted to play by that point, I think. Um, Peter saying, did you consider Admech? I did consider Admech, actually, mate. And funny you should say that. Let me zoom this one down. This I think I showed this on Monday's live stream. Because I've got some Admech models from the Kill Team starter set. Um, and I did this one as a bit of a, a, bit of a test model. Uh, let me just get that light back on again so you can see it. Oh, constantly everything, everything on, everything off. Uh, we'll do this one. Um, so yeah, so I bought some basin material for it just to try and just to do one as a bit of a test, really, to see if I could get away with doing something like this. Really, that doesn't seem to want to focus on the face, does it? Let me take that away and see if it will. Why does that not want to focus? Interesting. Uh, maybe it's just a touch close. 
that might be better there. Uh, yeah, so I kind of I, I tried that one really more more just as a bit of a something to do really, and to see whether I could be whether I could be bothered to uh, paint the whole thing. Actually, while I've got it in my hand, I'm just going to run some black paint around the base of it and just tidy that up because it's just off where it's been dipped in the uh, in the base and material. Might as well do that just to, let's uh, stick it on here. We'll do that while we're just sitting chatting. Um, so yeah, I did consider. I'm not. I'm not sure. To be fair, um, Dustin's saying favorite would be the wet nurse from Kingdom Death. It is horrific, mate. Yeah, you're right. Um, Luke's saying there. Just God seen there's a new GW Keeper of Secrets. Um, I didn't know if there was, mate. Actually, um, yeah, Thunderbolt Cavalry, mate. That's them. Cavalry Vision saying just in time for 40k. I've had them painted for ages, mate. If you go back and look on my channel. There was a time when I was uh, when I was doing those because they were going to be my new army for last year. I think it was twenty nineteen. I started them kind of at the start of the year, and I was just gonna. I don't even know if I had any real intention of playing at that stage. It was just a case of like, I thought I'd just build myself an army up, and I always liked the the Space Wolf models. I actually had this bit the the Star Collecting box that had been kind of sitting around gathering dust, so I decided just to kind of go with it because I had it, but. I'm not sure if I could kind of like commit to painting a full army of them. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm. I'm not sure if I'm convinced by them. There's a new star collecting box just coming out. I think actually for them, which has got obviously got more of the Primaris models in. Um, but part of me would would want to get rid of like there was the um, the normal blood claws or whatever they're called, and replace them all with Primaris models because I just like I like I like the the bigger scale ones so much nicer. It doesn't. It makes it doesn't make me want to have any of the original uh, blood claws or whatever they're called in in the uh, in the army. So anyway, I'll decide. I'll come up with some option. But um, yeah, so but that was just just for a bit of fun, really, just for something to do. Like I see, I've got I've got like a ten man squad of those from um, from the kill team starter box. Um, Luke's saying Space Wolves were his first Space Marine army. Yeah, Space Wolves are nice. Like, they're just a bit more thematic, aren't they? A bit different. Uh, Grey Hunters are Blood Claws. Yeah, I think Peter, you're right. I forget which they are. Um, let's have a look down. Probably saying I have a feeling Reavers will become pretty good. Um, I like them as I like them as models as well, mate. Scott's saying Space Wolves are amazing models with great lore, but the Codex is near in current meta. Yeah, I've heard that, mate. I think there's a, there was a few errors, wasn't there? Um, which didn't do it any good. It was already wrong before it was released, I think. Um, Tim says, Andy, I still think you should make your own Blackjack Legacy theme chapter. Do you know what it is? I am seriously considering it, mate, because I kind of, I've, I found out recently how to make your own um, sort of decals with uh, a printer and proper decal paper. So I could put like, the little legacy logos on the on the shoulders of them as well so i am tempted but i'd probably have to paint them black i think that's a that's the only thing so i'll i'll consider it mate but yeah it, it does tempt me uh luke saying what stages did you go through on the armor for those marines such a clean job if i remember right mate it was the same blues that i used on my infinity miniatures so it was i think if i remember the colors I think it was McCrag blue as a base with a highlight with a, with an airbrush highlight of Calgar blue and then I think I used is it Fen Fenris grey I think it is Fenrisian grey is kind of like a, um, as an edge highlight um, but I, that's why I think I could kind of like now I've got my airbrush and now I kind of I've got the confidence to kind of to do that kind of work like that's um, that Admech model was pretty much, this, this one here was pretty much all airbrush. So I primed it with, um, what's the pink color? Pink horror, I think it was. I primed the whole thing pink horror. You can kind of see it underneath there. And then primed it from above with um, Avalon Sunset and then just picked out the silver bits and the black bits. I think I did the trousers with the black contrast paint and then just picked out the other bits with black paint and then went over with them with silver. And actually it didn't take me too long to do it. The, the whole idea was to try and do something really quick. Um, and yeah, I did something similar with those Space Marines a while ago. It was just, just I just did it as a bit of a test, really, 
to see whether I could kind of face paint an entire army of the same colours. But because I kind of found a way to, and I, I think I only had like a, a like a, a ten man box just to kind of work with, um, and I was using them for kill team at the time. But I think if I kind of if I built up five hundred points and then sprayed them all with the airbrush, I think I'd probably blast through them all pretty quick. So I, yeah, I am I am tempted. Like I am tempted. Um, Mark says he's been researching 40k armies with 90 edition on the way. The entry point is now a star collecting box. Really got my interest up. Me, me, me too, mate. I mean, like I mentioned before, me and Krabby had been potentially talking about just playing small point scale games for a little while. Um, and then obviously, like, lockdown got in the way and all that kind of stuff. But um, this sounds it sounds like such a, like a such a good entry point, really. Um, so... But and that's kind of like, like new edition. I almost want to start a new army. You know, it's like we're all hobbyists. We all do the same thing. It doesn't matter what you've already got. You almost feel like you want to do something new, really, don't you? Uh, Ogre Hunter. That was what it was, mate. Thank you very much. Um, Scott says, "Look at the Space Marine Vanguard star collecting." To be honest, mate, I had that one in my basket today. I almost bought it. Um, that's what I'd been looking at. But I, I'll be honest. One of the reasons that I, I kind of I'm humming and hawing on Space Marines. It's because if if um, if Al starts being one of a, like my regular opponents and he's playing Space Marines as well, I'm sure neither of us really want to be just playing like kind of Marine on Marine all the time. Um, so I was just trying to find something a bit different. But I think what I'll probably end up doing is is waiting for the new box set, and I might I might get two small armies um, from the from the new start box and do like a Necron one and uh, do a Space Marine one from that. That might be the best way to do it. Uh, Ogre Hunter, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Peter. But as I was saying, there's going to be a, a slow grow challenge when ninth comes out. I've got about four or five choices. I, potentially, mate. I, I, I think Scott was asking me about this last week, and I think my answer to him was is still the same now as well. Really, I just want to be sure that it's something that I want to commit to myself as well. What I don't want to do is set up a slow grow challenge and then not not really commit to it myself. So I'm I'm, I'm waiting to find out a little bit more information about the uh about the game itself to make sure it's something i definitely want to kind of i want to invest in it's fine giving it a go with kind of stuff i already own but um if i'm going to spend money on it i'd, ra I'd rather make sure it's something i really want to play um peter say at least it was called a hunter yeah that's what it is mate ogre hunter um yeah the mama said ace job thank you very much mate um Daniel Engels in as well nice to see you daniel probably saying i've made a good choice for you plenty bigger stuff I just don't know if I, I don't know if I like like the models, mate. That's the problem. They're a bit fiddly. That's that's why I was trying to practice on these just to do a quick job on them. Um, Krabby says black jack neck runs, <laughs> black with red glowy bits. Oh, could be tempted on that one. Um, VG saying okay, all base colors and washes on the post done on the poxy boys. Once I grab the agrax a dry, I can hit it with highlights. I've also um, pulled out of out of storage. My uh, my models from um, the Dark Imperium set, so my my Space Marines are sitting in a in a bath of stripper at the minute, so they're getting stripped, and all of my Death Guard, um, if I got I got them over here actually that they're kind of in a state of half finishedness. Uh, let me grab a couple of these bits because I think I don't know how many points there is from the um from the dark imperium set but that's as good a uh that'll be a, a nice little kind of starter point as well so i've got um i've got like my pox walkers and stuff like that that i've already painted so they're kind of again this is stuff that i, I ended up painting up to 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 use in uh, in kill team as well really so those guys are kind of done and, and cracked out ready to go so i'll probably finish these off as well um but I almost want to do them as a bit of a video, which is why I'm thinking a star collecting box. It's much more interesting to paint a star collecting box from scratch than it is to see how I'm going to paint some half finished miniatures. Um, got these guys, still got the base to finish on these. But he's done. Uh, again, this guy's done as well, but the bases are still to finish on them and stuff. I couldn't decide how I wanted to base them, so like they're still still loose on the base really. So, um, but these are these are really simple done. I did a video on how to do these as well and how to paint them. So they were all done as well, um, and and these guys as well. So they were really quick jobs. Basically, I think I primed them with Death Guard Green through the airbrush. But you could you could buy the spray can as well at the time, 
paint the gold bits, paint the silver bits, uh, two washes of Agrax, and that was pretty much it really. So the idea was to do them nice and quick. But um, yeah, so, I, so I've got options, as they say. I've got options. I'm not short of miniatures like that. But, uh, um, where are we up to now? Peter's saying the, um, see if I can find that again. Um, uh, where were we up to? Uh, oh, that was it. Crabby was saying, I've met a good choice. Crabby was also, also with Space Marines. Neck ones are getting some bigger stuff too. Blackjack neck runs, yeah, sorry about it. Uh, Peter says, the beauty of Space Marines really got a specific chapter in the codexes and uh, just use regular Marine codex. Yeah, there is that as well, mate, isn't there? Um, um, Peter says, that's why they always redo the generic Marine codex first in your new edition. Yeah, no doubt the first ones we'll get will be a, um, a Necron and a Marine codex without a shadow of a doubt. John says, he's just finished his N4, oh, Tim says, printing your own decals. There's something I'd, le I'd like to learn. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do a video on it if, if I pick up the bits and pieces to do it. It's actually more simple than it looks. John Estel says, just finished his enforcers for the slow grow, about 300 points. Cheated by having the clear jet bikes. Nice one, mate. Uh, VJ says, paint the book, painting six minis with only three handles. I'm well over swapping. That's why I invested in that um, Red, uh, Red Grass Games Kickstarter uh, for that exact reason. Uh, Krabby said he wouldn't mind another army but not a lot interests me at the minute Necrons and Sisters a little but not enough to dive in fully I don't think yeah and Jason's saying I either start Wolves or Blood Angels if we do a slow grow um, Scott's saying that's why I chose Dracari I love the look of the new sculpts um, Krabby saying mate they look awesome I just, they're just honestly mate it's I enjoy painting like like I say like when, like when I was painting these kind of things especially the um, the uh, the AOS stuff it was just painting just for the fun of it really like it's just and it was the same with these guys as well they were just these death god i painted up enough to kind of to play them in kill team really so i've got like everything else is lying there so there's like the these have been in a box in the garage like ever since so you know the whatever the big thing's called they're all like kind of primed with the death god green just kind of ready to ready to crap on and and do them if you like, but yeah. Yeah, I've got options. Options, options, options. That's the problem. So I could, in theory, get into 40K, ninth edition, not spend a penny. <laughs> but we all know that's not how this works. <laughs> um, Tony said, I discovered a lot about myself this year. I'm only too happy to paint up and gift single minis for someone, but multiple models that are the same would be a nightmare for me. Uh, yeah, I, I remember you saying that, Tony. You kind of, I think you've just, you kind of, you know where your sweet spot is, don't you now? Vigil says that you also backed the red grass handle too. Peter Cini seemed to have already started a slow grow 40k with his Dark Angels. See, I like Dark Angels minis as well, I must admit. Um, Vigil says, not helping me now though. Yeah, you're right, mate. Not helping me. That's, that's why I put all of these, um, what do you call your ones, on corks. Um, otherwise, I'd, I'd keep, otherwise, you've got to pull them off when, they, when they're wet and, and re keep replacing them. Um, Busey saying you can't beat the detail on GW Winnie's. So I'll be struggle painting things like Walking Dead when the detail's not quite there. Yeah, sometimes they can be a bit soft. I mean, some of some of the things on these um, on these uh, Veeman really, there's the odd thing where I'm thinking, actually, actually, what is that? In the grand scheme of things, these are not bad sculpts, but there has been the odd thing where I'm thinking, is that a strap? Is it part of an arm? Is it a muscle? That kind of stuff. Um, and I say, I always said I'd get a sister's army if they were ever redone. I have two of the starter boxes sat in their cellophane. Wow, Anna. Wow. You need to get them painted. Uh, Krabby's saying, decent little force out of that box, mate. I played against it with my Raven Guard a few months ago. Yeah, I, I think it's... It, that's, what, that's what I mean. I, I, I could get away with not doing anything and just finish these off. Um, but I'd quite like to... I'd, I'd, I'd quite like to paint something for a video. And like, like I say, just to say... Um, I'm just going to finish what I'm doing kind of thing. Isn't it a very good video topic? Having a video about how long does it take me to paint a star collecting box or um, like a star collecting box in a weekend, something like that, like a challenge video will do much better. So I'm going to paint something. I almost want to get something out of it at the same time. Um, 
Pusey saying finds more detail easy to paint if that makes sense. I agree, mate. Like one one of these things with the Death Guard stuff, I always thought they were far too detailed and it would be a nightmare to paint them. But actually, there's so much detail on them. Like washes take really well. So even if you don't pick out all the details, even even if you pick, paint a lot of it the same colour, like the the washes kind of separate the panels a bit for you and stuff. Um, Scott's back the red grist handles as well. Crabby saying you could do Dark Angels, paint them as the Fallen and players either. Yeah, see, I, I don't know enough about the law <laughs> for that. Uh, Peter saying, uh, yeah, he's got a notice from Element Games that his Dark Angels shipped out. Nice one. And um, Peter says, I almost went to Sisters because of the new plastics, but I'm seriously thinking about Admech after the new release. The, the new um, the new Star Collecting Box for Admech is really nice. And to be honest, that was one of the reasons why I, I got these, I dug these out and painted these, because it was like, I think I might give it a go, but... We'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll settle on something at some point. Um, but yeah, nice one. How are we doing for time, eh? Right, it's coming up to 11 o'clock. Um, oh, Kieran's saying, let Patreons choose your army if you're brave enough. Do you know what it is, mate? Um, if I could narrow it down to maybe three or four that I liked, I'd quite happily let Patreons choose the army. So that might not be a bad shout. If I Let me just get this light off. If I can narrow it down to maybe four armies. Because part of me thinks, do I just crack, crack on with the Death Guard and then just, just keep sort of building these ones up? Do I, do I basically keep going with the Space Wolves? Do I just start a new Marine Force? Do I, do I dive in and give Admech a go? I don't want to buy any Necron stuff because I, I, if I'm going to do Necrons, I want the new Warriors and, and the new stuff, if you like, so... But yeah, I think if I can narrow it down to maybe three or four, three or four factions, yeah, I'll I'll let the uh, because because then if it's if it's a choice of between four and I like them all, as opposed to I'm not that fussed. Somebody picked for me, I'll end up with an army I don't really want to paint. So yeah, if I can, if I can kind of narrow it down to like three or four that I like, um, yes, I'll, uh, I'll I'll let the Patreons choose it. Neon pink marines for the win. <laughs> I'm sure that would go down uh, really well. So anyway, folks, I'm going I'm going to cut it a bit shorter tonight because I'm I'm just kind of sitting here rambling now. I've got I've got no more painting to do. So um, I've I've, finished, I've actually achieved what I set out to do, which was which was to do the challenge. Um, so what I'll do, folks, we I have a video tomorrow night. Please, 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 if you have the time tomorrow or in the next couple of days, please do check it out. Uh, I'm talking about um, tabletop standard painting. Um, Busey's just saying, you know, if there's 500 points in the Dark Imperium set, it, it won't be far off that, mate, to be fair. There's quite a bit of stuff in that set. But yeah, tomorrow's video is about um, tabletop standard painting um, and about how tabletop standard doesn't exist. It's one of those things where it's, it's about encouraging new people to get started in the hobby and people who are maybe a little bit frightened or a bit uh, wary about showing them into their paint miniatures off and worrying what people will say to them. So if you watch it and you enjoy it, I would really appreciate you kind of sharing it. Share it into some of the groups that you're in. Share it with your gaming friends. It's about kind of giving people confidence to, to get started in the hobby and to, to not be frightened to kind of, to don't be worried about, about the standard of your stuff really. So yeah, let me, let me know what you think tomorrow after you watched it. It'd be nice if, this, if it was a video that I kind of, one of those videos that's like, is suitable for everybody if you like. It doesn't matter what game you play, it doesn't matter what standard you paint to. It's one of those kind of things. Uh, Peter's saying there, yes, very interested in tabletop standard and different thoughts. Cool stuff, mate. So yes, seven o'clock, I think I've got that set for. Let me have a quick look and I'll tell you what time it is due to go live. Because um, I've set it in the schedule. Um, let's have a quick look. Oh, so many buttons to press to, to get to where you want to be these days in, bloody, uh, in YouTube. It is set for... Okay, yeah, channel dashboard, yeah, uh, videos, <laughs> great, great radio this, mate, isn't it? Great radio. It is scheduled for um, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock UK time tomorrow night. I'll put a link in the Facebook group tomorrow and stuff, but yeah, it, it's, it's one of those videos I, I really would like if you, if you can turn, take some time, watch it start to end. Share it with your kind of with your friends and your gaming groups if you kind of agree with what I'm trying to say. Um, it would be nice. To, I, I want to try and encourage new painters, new players, people who play board games and want to paint their their kind of their board game miniatures. I want to kind of 
make everybody feel like they're not to worry about it and just to do it. So yeah, please try that out. Um, Beauty scene as well. Don't forget the box reveal Saturday. I think Krabby's doing a live reaction. Yes, please. My Patreons and stuff like we did last time. Let's go and hang out in the. Uh, let's go and hang out and um, check out Krabby's channel on Saturday, and uh, and we'll have a chat about the unboxing. So, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if anybody isn't a Patreon and they would like to help support the long term sustainability of this channel and in the future of, of this as a business to keep it going please do check out the patreon um, and thank you to everybody that already does support so i will see you in tomorrow's video i'll see you in the facebook group i'll see you in the discord take care everyone have a lovely time and i'll see you for monday night's video as well monday night live stream too <laughs> i'm rambling now good night all see you all later Thanks for watching my video, I hope that you really enjoyed it. And if you did, why not consider clicking on the suggested video below to see more of the work that I've done. If you'd like to support the long-term sustainability of this channel, why not consider checking out my Patreon, where you can pledge in support from as little as $2 a month, and there is lots of different tiers and bonuses, which will give you access to a private Discord server, it will give you free t-shirts, free mugs, a podcast every month, and a number of other things, including getting your name at the end of every video, like these awesome folks who already support me now. 